it's a it's a new year. Tifa's Italian. <laughs> <laughs> Vincent is our, my Valentine. <laughs> <laughs> it's been revealed. How are you boys? How's it going? I'm good. I'm I feel like it's been fucking good. It's been like four years since we've talked to each other. God, it's been, it's it's been three meteor years fall. since Meteor Fall. <laughs> yeah, that I mean, has. actually, it might have been. How long? How how long? Have yeah, been yeah, on this three fucking years. No, oh, oh yeah, that too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when when did we actually, talk about Meteor Fall <laughs> on this podcast? <laughs> oh God, yeah, maybe we're coming up on that, aren't we? Yeah. Your three. Oh, this is all. It's all. It's all planned. I meant to do that. Yeah, this was all <laughs> definitely thought of ahead of time. Okay, so how many of us have played Dirge of Cerberus before? I have. That's that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the expert this time. Let's go. Well, you're still learning about it because you were just streaming it today, and you seem very like. Oh, it it, it might as well be a blind playthrough because I yeah. um when I played it uh I. I guess it must have been when it first came out. That makes sense. I think it came out in like August. Um, when it was cool. 2006 <laughs> uh, in, in the US. And that was right around when I was pl- when I had played through Final Fantasy. I think I played through Final Fantasy 7 for the first time in like 2004. So I was like Jones in for some more Final Fantasy 7. <laughs> yeah. I think at that point I had played like Final Fantasy 8, then Final Fantasy 7. And then I played Kingdom Hearts and I was like, wow, fuck this game. I miss Final <laughs> Fantasy games. And then eventually this came out after Advent Children, I think. And I was like, yo, give yep. me more of that. I want as much of that as I can get. And I loved it. I remember none of it. <laughs> did, uh, did y'all do any reading about it? I did a, a little uh, bit, yeah. So did I. I did a lot of research in preparation for this season, mostly to... I learned a lot about the game, like mechanically itself, which is uh. really just fun. A lot of really weird, uh, hidden nuggets here and there. And how the Japanese version of this game plays incredibly differently from the English one. Like they <laughs> oh, may yeah. as well be two different games. Oh, I didn't <laughs> really. know that. Yeah, yeah. So like in the uh, in the original Japanese version, you oh, can't yeah. attack when you jump. Uh, Vincent has a dodge roll. He walks a lot slower. <laughs> like it's, it's very weird. Star Apparently, Souls. like when they put. Uh, the original game out in Japan, they were just like, "Yo, this game sucks ass." We should for the for the international release, we should make it good. <laughs> yeah. So when I was when I was trying to like get a timeline in my head of when this game came out compared to something like Crisis Core or Advent Children or Final Fantasy X, um, I did see that the Japan had a two thousand like six or two thousand eight or something release of this yeah, game, and yeah. it was like the international one, and I'm like, yeah. so it came out again and then it like that makes complete sense dude i kind of want to play the japanese one now yeah it it sounds like it's a lot more um uh obtuse i guess which like yeah as people who like dark souls it's like oh obtuse that sounds great <laughs> yeah sign me up but um one of the uh, one of the things that i read that i particularly both enjoyed and hated is when they were like originally wanting to make a action game they considered multiple of the Final Fantasy properties. One of them being Yuna. They were like, "What if Yuna was a main character who used guns?" Of Final Fantasy X fame. <laughs> yeah. They'll they'll never they'll never come back to that idea. And, yeah, they um, also wanted to do uh, Barrett, right? They thought about Barrett, um, which they eventually decided against because uh, Vincent was such a blank slate that they could do more storytelling with him. But the one that truly horrifies me uh-huh, is that it could have been Irving Kenius from FF8. Yeah. And I was like, God, we dodged a fucking bullet with that one. <laughs> now, we haven't... Uh, actually, no, we wouldn't even had to have fucking dodged the bullet if Irvine was shooting. Hey, oh, Devin! <laughs> Got him! <laughs> so, obviously, on the on the show, we haven't gotten to Final Fantasy VIII yet, even though we've talked about it more than any other Final Fantasy combined. <laughs> um, but... Uh, Imagine yeah, if you we'll, just played we'll a sex to- pest the whole time. We'll get to Irvine <laughs> when we when we get there in seven years. <laughs> yeah, every time you like press the R button to fire, he just like cries and he can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's just an RNG thing if he's if he's gonna puss out or not. <laughs> but yeah, this was like basically the game that kind of uh, springboarded their kind of resurgence of Final Fantasy VII content, at least yeah. in, on the state side, because Advent Children just came out. Then they were starting on the compilation, and I know there was Before Crisis, which was like a Japan-only thing where you play as the mm-hmm. Turks. This game, and then Crisis Core, um, and there's all this like, just tons of uh, renewed interest in the franchise. I mean, it could have just been like, I mean, I don't know, it was only five years after <laughs> Final Fantasy VII or so uh, came out, right? Well, I guess it was... no, it's. It, I think it's almost ten years. Yeah. So yeah, closer to ten years, maybe like for the ten-year. It'd be like five after. 
Hen came out or something yeah. like that. Yeah, it, it, this came out much later um, compared to 10 than sense. I expected. My, yeah. my scale of when the 90s is is still like skewed. I still think it was only 10 years ago. T- 2001 yeah. to 2010 to me is one year. So like everything happened at the exact same time. And it all started <laughs> on one fateful morning in September. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's playing this game. It feels very uh, reminiscent, inspired by maybe Devil May Cry or even Shadow the Hedgehog, which came out like the year before. Oh, uh, yeah. So it's, it's interesting you mentioned Devil May Cry because I think I read uh, somewhere that when people heard about the concept for the game they were expecting the gameplay to be very much like devil may cry and i think uh uh kitase or nomura whoever was uh giving the interview was kind of just like oh no like this will actually surprise you the way the the game plays and it it kind of came from um kitase was the uh the director on this one if i'm not mistaken and producer the producer he wanted to um he was a big fan of first person shooter games so that's why it kind of came along with this and i was very interested when i was going through the the configuration menu in dirge of cerberus that it had like sensitivity settings for the mouse or for like keyboard yeah. settings and stuff and i'm like i yeah. kind of want to fucking plug in a mouse and keyboard into this ps3 that i'm playing it off of and, where are you uh, doing that can- alex um i was able to uh use a plugin for the emulation um i couldn't find a mouse and keyboard that was compatible with the ps2 because uh, okay the protocol that's used on keyboards and mouses are very different now. Yeah. Like uh, some mice will work, but the sensitivity is too high because the DPI set it on your mouse is like way higher than it used to be back in like the nineties. You do you do you remember old mice for computers would have that purple plug on the end of it that had like four pins and a little uh, bar? Do you remember that? I believe you know that was called the PS2. It was called the PS2. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought you were about to talk about the uh, the hard boiled egg yolk that you have to replace every few years. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was just like, wait a minute, that was literally the PS2. Yeah, that trackball never tasted as good as a hard boiled egg, but I still uh, <laughs> I still ate them because they were full yeah. of uh, protein. <laughs> Um, so I guess, wait, that's a good, uh, segue, I think, into like, how, how the fuck are we playing this game, y'all? Like, what are, how are you guys experiencing the, the <laughs> cult classic hit Dirge of Cerberus Final Fantasy VII from 2006 on the <laughs> PS2? How are you guys playing this game? Because for a game that I guess is kind of as important as it is to the universe of Final Fantasy VII, which is getting more and more important now, it's yeah. pretty fucking hard to find a way to play this fucking game. Well... It's never been ported. Yeah. I I bought a um an actual fat PS2 based. from a guy at a police station. Not as based. When I went to meet him, the first thing he said was I didn't have to wear that mask I was wearing and I was just like, can I can I please just have my PS2? <laughs> wow, what an edgy thing to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, like, dude, isn't like, this game about like a virus <laughs> infecting people or something? Yeah, he, was, he was like, you know, vaccines kill more people than they save and I was like, can I have my PS2, please? <laughs> and so he sold me the PS2. And then I bought a hard drive. I bought a um like a a mod network card to use like a computer hard drive for it. I bought memory cards and then I just emulated it. Fuck it. So I have, <laughs> so I have the whole modded PS2 set up with an HDMI output and everything ready to go. And I was like, all right, I'm ready. And then I couldn't find the space on my desk to do it. And I wanted to play it last night. So I was like, bah, emulation, it's fine. I almost had a very similar thing. Um, <laughs> so at the time of recording this podcast, I literally just did the homework like a couple of hours ago um, because uh I knew that I, I had the option to emulate it and I was like, I would like to stream my homework this season and, you know, have videos of it, uh, just to show my first experience with it. Um, in case anyone wanted to watch that. And I was like, okay, well, I don't really want to do emulator just cause I don't feel like installing shit on my computer. I was like, but I can do that as an option. And then Alex pointed out to me, he's like, wait, if you have a PS3 that's backwards compatible, that makes it really easy to stream. Which, if you're familiar with streaming and using a PS3, it's kind of a pain in the ass to do because you need to get an <laughs> HDMI splitter because they had the the HD copyright protection thing. That, um, But, I mean, I've streamed from this PS3 in the past and I was like, wait, yeah, it's backwards compatible. I can just get a disc. I can find my disc. It's probably in my garage somewhere. And I went looking for that fucking disc and I could not find it at all. I did, <laughs> however, find my Vincent Val- Valentine figure that probably came out around the same time as Advent Children <laughs> or Dirge of Cerberus that I was a collectible now yeah it's I I have it upstairs now but I couldn't find the fucking disc so I just ordered one on eBay it came in yesterday and I was like cool let's (laughs) see if I can get it but what I did learn 
we're talking about, you know, mouse and keyboard and trying to get it to work with a PS2 and all of that shit. Some games, I think, from my research on it, just don't work with a DualShock <laughs> 4 uh, controller on a PS3. Even if, like, I had both of my DualShock 4 controllers connected to the PS3, I was able to go through the menus, no problem, everything was working great. As soon as I got into, like, play the PlayStation 2 game, no con like no controller support <laughs> at all. So I had to dig around and find some old... Uh, six axis PlayStation 3 controllers and more annoyingly the weird USB like the old USB oh yeah uh, yeah. micro yeah yeah I had to find a, a cable for that or mini so I kind of like those because they're a little more they a little more hefty than the micro yeah so it was a little bit uh at the buzzer but I got every all the components I, I completed the the fetch quest to get everything necessary <laughs> to be able to fucking stream this this game <laughs> There you have it, the most elusive Final Fantasy game. Yeah. <laughs> we're, about to, we're about to bring it to you so you don't have to do this. <laughs> How about you, Alex? What'd you do? My roommate has a PlayStation 2 already, and I was like, I'm just going to buy a copy of Dirge of Cerberus for 10 bucks off eBay. And I did that. <laughs> and I also emulated it. Damn, you got yours for 10 bucks? I uh, Since I couldn't find my disc, I also bought it off eBay for 20 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> it, it didn't come in a box or anything. It was literally just like... Oh, same. <laughs> Mine was just in a sleeve, but it's in, in good condition, so... I wanted to see if I can emulate it, so I, I got it emulating pretty well because I did also just want to be able to take screenshots, but I kind of just gave up and probably am going to stick to the PS2 because I got very far in it. Yeah. Not very, but pretty far. But uh, emulating is a little chuggy because this isn't really a game that people have been really spending a lot of time trying to emulate. <laughs> <laughs> so there's not a lot of resources out there. You're, you're um, playing it the way that Yoshinori Kitase wanted <laughs> intended to it. it to be played. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do playing you guys it. know how the emulation, the or not the emulation, do you guys know how the backwards compatibility of a PlayStation 3 works? No. So The first uh, one, the first like George Foreman girl with the Spider-Man 2 font on it. Uh -huh. that was That's the, the one uh, that I have. That one literally has a PlayStation 2 chip in it, so it actually is able to play it pretty well. Yeah, it's it literally... Um, Just has the hardware in it. I was hanging out with a friend of the show, Ninnies, who um, was on the East Coast for MAGFest and came and crashed at uh, me and my fiancé's house. Um, and he was explaining that all to me where like they, they had uh, an excessive amount of the old slim PlayStation uh, like chips, like the, the hardware for it and they weren't making the ps2 anymore and they had the ps3 and the size of it was so large that they're like well we have extra space in here and they're like fuck it throw the ps2 things in there <laughs> slap it all together and ship it out it's backwards compatible baby it can play playstation 1 and playstation 2 games let's That's make awesome. it happen but what they didn't think of with that because it was kind of i guess a last minute decision uh was that that shit gets really hot so uh, okay people who want to keep these and like use these with the backwards compatibility a lot of people will actually mod them to have better circulation and better um you know just airflow through wow. it so that's something that maybe i should look into but i was thinking of doing that for my ps4 because i've also been fucking around with that and it gets it turns into uh -huh. a fucking uh like airplane <laughs> imagine the, especially later games which it's really pushing it speaking of having just like shit tons of ps2 chips around yeah <laughs> y'all remember living in an era where there were just like easy to get software chips and like there was not a fucking worldwide Ugh. shortage of these things <laughs> yeah. yeah well what a time well do you remember uh we were we were recording a podcast much like this one except we were talking on this about very day final fantasy one and we're like, oh, hey, we're all in Alex's basement, breathing yeah. <laughs> air, uh, having spit from our mouths hit each other with no second thought. Good night kisses all around. And it's like, hey, there's this weird, this weird kind of thing called coronavirus that's like... Uh, geostigma. It's geostigma. Yeah, geostigma. Remember when coronavirus was still the novel virus? I remember. <laughs> <laughs> the novelty has since worn off. <laughs> so, uh, there's a service. Dirge of Cerberus. So the first thing I've noticed about this game, actually it wasn't the first thing, it was a ways down, but is it very odd to y'all how it saves the game? Like the way memory works on this game? Because like, I, have you seen yet? I didn't notice it too much. Um, I didn't. I didn't get any. I, I didn't like lose HP and have to go back to a previous checkpoint or anything yet. Yeah. But um, I did see 
at the at the very start of it when it's kind of explaining just the features of the game it says like this game has an autosave feature it and it autosave. shows an icon at the top and it's very cute it's the uh like playstation 2 or ps1 memory card and it's like arrows flying yeah. into it. and i was like oh that's so cute i miss having memory cards the uh the weird thing to me about it is that there are no files like you don't save a file on this game so like i've played through a good chunk of it now and i wanted to start it over last night so i could be more refreshed for this episode of the podcast and there's just a chapter select there is no file so instead of starting a new game you just start a chapter select and you just go to the first chapter and start again so it's, I feel like it's that's, interesting the way that works i feel like that's pretty of its time as well i think a lot of I mean, remake kind of does that now but it has a separate where you can just kind of go back and i guess it's because you can, it's kind you of can a, uh load files on remake i believe right i guess that's true maybe like, there's no remember. files at all like if you like yeah, this is pretty to, much like you unlock the stage and then you get to go play through the chapter to try and get and a better high score. Yeah, and it's there forever is the thing. So like if you like, you know, if if you and somebody else who like live with you, you have to get a separate memory card. You have to get a separate from. memory card. So like if, if you can't, only one person can have the joy of unlocking the stages, basically. So like if you're another person who like lives in a household with somebody who has Dirge Cerberus, like you will not unlock the stages. Once they're unlocked, they're unlocked. And you never get to experience that again because there are no save files. So you don't get to play your oh. own file. You just chapter select from then on. So I think when you look at it that way, it's it, and, and like you're saying, you're like, it's an interesting way of saving. But yeah. honestly, that's kind of just how games always used to be. Like, think of like Super Smash Brothers Melee. Like, you could only do the thing to unlock the characters like once and then in order to have to do it again like if you wanted to get Mewtwo again by ha playing for 20 straight hours or whatever like yeah, you would just have yeah. to delete the memory card and stuff it, yeah. it, it, it kind well, of works the same sort of way as like trophies in games where it's I feel like, like for a fighting game that makes sense but for like any other game there's always been like save files you know what I mean so that different people could play the game you could yeah play it's it. it's it's definitely weird uh, comparing it to Final Fantasy 7, which just had yeah. a bunch of slots to put save state, you know, not save states, but... Yes, that's because it's more of an RPG. Yeah, exactly. So. I, mean, I don't know. Yeah, it's interesting to think about it that way. Yeah. But, but it's just one dude. But it's not necessarily bad. It's not a, like a bad thing because I, I went back and selected Chapter 1 yesterday and like it puts you in Chapter 1 with nothing. You know what I mean? I wonder what would happen if you selected like Chapter 4. Like what guns and things would you have? Is it just whatever the last person had because like say you and i were trying to play it at the same time right and i prioritized like upgrading my weapons and you prioritized getting a higher level when when one of us went back to try chapter four again would we have better guns or would we have a higher level yeah that's a good both <laughs> or just it's just all cumulative because it's not it's not entirely all cumulative because i started over yesterday and i was level one and had nothing oh so i don't know that's a good question yeah, it's weird. It's yeah, a weird I setup. Guess, I guess we can try and keep our eye maybe, out for that. Yeah. Like, maybe after mm. you beat it or something, there's like a New Game Plus sort of thing where you can... Mm. Who knows? Or maybe mm. when you f it looks at to see where you were in the pre chapter previous and sees like, okay, like you want to like improve your progress from this point or whatever. Like, you will yeah. be level one no matter what at chapter one because you're always at that level. Yeah. That's always what you have to be in chapter one. But if you go, like, you can redo chapter two and, like, find new stuff. But yeah. And, and like, who's... If you do chapter one better, maybe the next time you go to chapter two, again, it'll, like, carry... It'll, you'll have better stuff yeah. to carry over. I don't know. It's hard to say. It's hard to say. Because, like, <laughs> even when you do better at the... I mean, we'll talk about this when we get to the end, but you choose your rewards for the end of each stage. So it wouldn't be the same each time. So even if you did better, you might do differently. You know what I mean? So it's interesting. There are some roguelike elements in this game, I've noticed. Like, even when you die, I think you can... Uh, like game over you can cash in your you can cash in your progress up to that point yes. like, hey do you want to this experience or do you want to just get for cash so you can kind of get a little better yeah each time you go through Haiti, Haiti style it does have a good system of um speaking of servers yeah nice. it does <laughs> have boy. a good system of like give him a pet <laughs> of helping you to um deal with stages that you're not good at because like as i was playing through it i think i died one time and it was on a pretty tough stage, but at the end of that, it was like, oh, do you want to take all the experience you've gotten thus far in this stage and apply it to a level or like take money? And I was like, oh, yeah. So the next time I tried the level, I was like two levels higher and I was able to beat it pretty easily. So it's actually pretty good about that. You can actually still grind even though it's a shooter. Exactly. It's interesting seeing like where and how they uh, applied the, some of the Final Fantasy staples to this because yeah. it's not like how Phoenix Downs work. Like usually you would... Uh, 
throw that on someone who's dead, but if you're the only player, how do you do that? Like, oh, you have to... I didn't know how to do it for a long time. I was like, what is happening? You have to use it ahead of time, and it basically revives you automatically. Oh, okay. auto lives you, yeah. So if you're like, oh, shit, this is going to be really hard, and I kind of want a second life, I will use the Phoenix down now, so when I die, I come back. It's like an auto life, a one-use auto life. Yeah. Nice, that's pretty cool. There's weird little things like that where they had to kind of think of, how do we make this work for like a single-player game? Or a single char character game, I should say. So should we rip into this Christmas present now? Should we press new game and get rolling on it? Yeah, I think so. I mean, pretty much. I, I, I can't think of anything that we really left out other than we're, we're kind of talking about it as three people who have recently played it. Um, yeah. So if you're if you're for some reason listening to this uh, podcast and have no idea, never saw it or anything, Dirge of Cerberus is basically just a weird third person slash first person shooter uh, action game for the PS2 where you play as Vincent Valentine and it's an extended story where you learn more about his past and the events post what they call Meteor Fall. This is three years after the end of Final Fantasy VII. Yeah. yeah. Except for the first scene, which Except we should the add. very first We should scene. talk about. So yeah, when we start a new game, we um, open on Meteor Fall and I think this is taking place, I think, during the cutscene after we beat Sephiroth and we see everyone flying around on the high winds. Oh, wait, do you think it's that one? Because I, I think it's after... We beat Hojo before we go back to the airship. And this is funny because this is exactly what I wanted to talk about is when does this cutscene <laughs> yeah, take place? So let's happen? talk about what we see here. Because so. doesn't doesn't the stuff with the holy materia and all that stuff happen while we're on the high wind? Like Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, is is this just before holy is happens? What well, I so feel like I, it would have to be because we can see Meteor. We can see Meteor. But we can see Meteor the entire like third disc and a good True. chunk of the second one. So I was thinking that like we've beaten Hojo and everybody's getting out of Midgar because Meteor is falling. And so we do this now because I think when we beat Sephiroth, like the high wind falls into the uh, the northern crater. We get on it and then immediately view Holy pop off. Yeah. Yeah. And so I was like, well, there's no time for it there. So maybe it's after we beat Hojo before we get back I on the I think that really tracks because we're going to get to it in a couple minutes, but we <laughs> we see a corpse perhaps that yeah. is probably Hojo because it's literally the room that we fought. I forget his name at that point in the game. It's like right before, you know, the the last disc where you have to fight um Hojo in his like ultimate form, but yeah. he's kind of just laying on the console that he was like working Basically on. Basically perfect cell. It's the yeah, part in the yeah. speed run where they just hold right and then skip over a majority of the, yeah, the end yeah, of the yeah, game yeah. and just go right to Sephiroth or whatever. But I mean, either way though, it's very unclear and it like it's kind of odd when you start thinking about like, wait, when is this? Like, what is happening? When was any of this the case? They might have like messed around with like the order of operations or anything, but I think this is supposed to be kind of a retcon. Why isn't Yuffie or Vincent on the high wind during that last cut? Scene? Oh, maybe. Yeah, maybe, I maybe. was I was just about to point out. And so this is like, there's what they were doing. They were helping at Midgar while everyone else was like watching Holy pop off. That was my thought. That's yeah, fair. so That's I was fair. I was just about to bring that up, where the only two characters that we see in the scene are Yuffie and Vincent. Which, if you remember from Final Fantasy VII, they were the optional characters. So they were optional, and right. they weren't in the final cut scenes because. Because why would they render these character models and put them into this, you know, limited space on the on the FMV? That'd be like four more renders because they have to do one, one of one, each, or three more renders, of both, yeah, both one, one and the other, or yeah. the yeah. other, um, and and just yeah. So I mean, I think that's a pretty good way of retconning. That's it. a pretty and, good. Yeah, and that's fair. And, uh, that's, that's, that that's might be how I immediately thought, like, oh, this is where they were. This that's might fair, be the fair. only time I will ever say that's a pretty good job they did at retconning something about the Final Fantasy VII <laughs> universe because I have a lot to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to do the FF Seven remake. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> um, so yeah, we we uh, we. It's a really cool. Uh, it's very the cinematic is gorgeous because oh, it is, looks like, right great. Really, I good. think they're using assets they used for Advent Children, so everything looks real top quality. Um, but we see Meteor Fall, we pan down, and uh, Yuffie, I think, is helping, I don't know what organization, but people are, are evacuating Midgar, and she's kind of helping coordinate. D Yuffie is helping coordinate an evacuation, and the thing I keep saying is, like, who put Yuffie in charge of a <laughs> fucking mass evacuation? It's like the last person. <laughs> oh, you're like 16 years old and a Wutai? Sure. Yeah, whatever, <laughs> fuck it. Well, <laughs> knowing been know Yuffie, <laughs> knowing Yuffie, she probably just did it herself and was just like, fuck you, listen to me. She's probably like, once all these people leave their houses, I can go in I behind can... them and steal all of their stuff. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, so she's, like, helping with that, and she's, like, kind of goofily yelling at the people, like, 
who are evacuating people. Oh, try not to drop anybody this time. Give me a report, you know. Mm-hmm. Kind of like, Evac complete. All injured. Move to transfer. Like, all yeah. right, let's get out of here. Like, that's all. Like, so. Yeah. During this whole thing, they're doing kind of a slow reveal because there's like an orbital shot. just kind of mostly focusing on her butt. And then it kind yeah. of pans up and she pulls her goggles Nomura. up. And she. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So we should mention that Nomura did uh, like all the character designs in this game. Yeah. yeah. Which isn't not surprising. Now this, I will say that this is like maximum edgy like right like like this is like the pinnacle of edgy final fantasy i feel like yeah. but like because it's supposed to be edgy i'm like no it's fine this time oh i'm <laughs> like, i am it's... fully buckled in for it it's like i when i was watching <laughs> the cutscene and Sorry, just like. hearing vincent uh like talk and everything i'm like well it makes sense that when i was 16 playing this i thought it was the coolest shit in the world yeah like now as an adult man and, uh, holy shit i am adult twice man. as old as i was the last time I played <laughs> this. and uh, like looking back i'm like god that's they're really going like the cinematic tough guy thing like, yeah with it and like now they i'm kind of like, do, like eh. a snake pliskin type of thing yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and he doesn't say much he's like very begrudgingly helping mm. out it, it's kind of lame but i also am fully down for it and yeah just me too me too it, like whole cloth i'm just like give it all to me i'll, I'll fucking it, take it like it's kind I of love great it. it's it's so earnest vincent has the least amount of dialogue in this entire game like, <laughs> everyone else talks way more than as he does. it should yeah, be yeah, yeah, yeah right should, yeah that means he will not it, he's way less likely to say something problematic that will get us to cancel yeah. him again yeah <laughs> he's got a shot at redemption here after yeah. the last time we were talking about it yeah uh, we shouldn't mention that vincent is voiced by steve bloom i love it spike spiegel he's such oh, a good shit. job i didn't even such realize that Hell yeah. He speaks so little, but yeah, he's like that beautiful, rich, kind of low, but not too low yeah. voice. Um, but yeah, he's on the call with Yuffie. He just did his rounds. He yeah. just said he's finished doing his portion rounds or whatever, evacuating everyone. But like he says, he knows there's something on the on the Mako cannon, he thinks. Yeah, yeah. And Yuffie looks up with like basically like a little like scanner goggle and there's like a life form found or whatever like what that's impossible. Yeah, how could there be like life form on the Mako cannon if the only thing on the Mako cannon was Hojo when we've killed Hojo? Yeah. Uh, like just as I thought. Oh, it must be malfunctioning <laughs> somehow. Yeah. So there's a there's a cool scene of Vincent running up some stairs, like going up to the Mako cannon, and it's like it looks great. We'll talk about it later, but um like so so Yuffie's like, yeah, shuffling everyone off, but then it cuts to like there's a lot of timing beats in this game that feel really weird, and one of them is this like this is about 15 seconds of Vincent running upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> it's like they really probably could have trimmed off like the first like 10 seconds to see him like Obviously, and that was he doesn't fan even service up. for <laughs> everyone's favorite part of the original game. Yeah. To run up the the Shinra. Uh, the Shinra stairs. Animate this. Well, we don't. This we, 15 seconds. We don't even see him pick up a uh, Barrett's ultimate weapon on the way because we know <laughs> that that's where it is. <laughs> <laughs> he goes to a locker and opens it, and there's a megaphone in there. And he's like, oh, who would need that? <laughs> But also, like we'll mention later, is that there's a lot of moments where Vincent decides when gravity is a problem. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> like, you could have just jumped up there if you really wanted to. Yeah, like, Vincent uh, flew in the original game, right? Kind of? Like, he could levitate? Oh, yeah. He could levitate. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> and, like, he can kind of do that in this. Like, once you finally get to take control of Vincent and actually get into, like, using him completely uh you immediately have a double jump yeah all oh, right but it's like yeah it's like why are you climbing stairs dog <laughs> yeah so vincent gets to the top of the stairs or on top of the cannon where we fought hojo and like you were saying Hojo's still slumped over the console like his body is still there right and i feel like vincent knowing that like there's a life form up here is like oh shit like v- hojo's probably still alive or something and pulls out his gun like he's gonna shoot the body and then like lightning strikes the uh the mako cannon and it- no there was like yeah there's like explosion or something yeah because as we recall from the cinematics from like ff7 like there's like tons of like tornadoes and hurricane level like shit going on yeah yeah in the city so yeah um the mako cannon explodes he turns back Hojo is gone. Oh, he's gone. Mm-hmm. So he's dead for good now. <laughs> <laughs> so either him or something has taken him. Yeah. And uh, and then Yuffie comes in and <laughs> on a hover bike, <laughs> <laughs> a fucking hover bike, and they jump on it together and right away. Not just any hover bike. I want to talk about this hover bike for a second. <laughs> I am convinced that this also exists simultaneously. It's very ambitious for its time, but exists simultaneously with the extended universe of Kirby's air ride because that is literally <laughs> just the the big wheel uh, thing that you could fly around on is like Meta Knight or Kirby. Sakurai. And- <laughs> <laughs> it is very funny because she like 
she's yelling, Vincent! And, like, he just jumps and, like, is, like, kind of blinking, he'll miss it, and she just snatches him up, and she's kind of like, Bleh! like, she's a little, air- she still gets air sick, even on the <laughs> Which we should also mention, uh, Yuffie is voiced by Mae Whitman, who you may know as, like, Katara from, like, uh, Avatar. Or- oh, okay. Roxy from Scott Pilgrim. Yeah. Or Anne and from Rest of AKA Element. AKA Egg. Egg. <laughs> Her? <laughs> oh, and, uh, when they go off, we do get one real quick shot of the console that, uh, Hojo was working on, and it says like "start program" on it, like it kind of. Flat- oh yeah, fragment program. Yeah, or that's something right. Like that. So like he was doing something. Something's getting ready to happen. Emails. E- he's sending emails. Hojo was downloading feet pics, <laughs> but his emails. <laughs> but but his emails. <laughs> I can't believe he was emailing on a public Mako. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then we get a a three years three years later, <laughs> and the titles. Yeah, and the that's, title. that's why that's why we had such a long break, by the way, is um, we wanted it to feel very cohesive with this game where it, it starts out and then three years pass and then it's finally, you know, you're playing a game now because, uh, yeah, it's been three years since we last recorded a podcast. It feels like Alex put in the discord the other day that we were waiting for like Vincent Valentine's Day to put it out. And I was like, that's pretty good. <laughs> that would be pretty good. It's pretty funny. <laughs> um, but yeah, so. We're in a cave. We're in a cave, not just any cave. Yeah, we're in like the middle of a flashback now. So we're like, I think, yeah, yeah, because it does say three years later, and then shows us Vincent in supposedly the cave at the Crescent Lake or whatever it was uh, that we had to find Lucretia. Yeah, yeah, where we needed like a chocobo or something to get in there. Yeah, yeah, and Lucretia's there encased in crystal as she was. Lucretia. Which we finally get He's, a pronoun. He says Lucretia. 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 Oh, it's right. funny because I was like, oh, that's how you pronounce it. And I already fucking forget how yeah, you pronounce same. it. Lucretia. 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 It's not <laughs> We're Tifa's- everybody doing the Italian hands. Everyone's okay, doing the Ita- Final Fantasy, Italy, you know, match made in heaven. <laughs> hey, bada bing. <laughs> but Vincent is reminiscing to himself. So we meet again, Lucretia. And we see some kind of. Yeah, we see still see Lucretia in the crystal. Yeah. Like we kind of saw her in FF7, right? She's kind of her, either her or her spirit is encased in this crystal. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we hear like echoes of her voice saying, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. And then we are, I guess, in present. Where yeah. We are playing the game. Yeah. So now it flashes to the present. We're in calm during like a, a festival, right? Yeah. And Vincent to himself but kind of to lucretia and his memory is like why why are you sorry i should apologize um and uh vincent's got a nice glass of wine he does i I think it's a glass of blood because he's a vampire (laughs) 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 it just look it just reminded me of like an r&b music video where he's got oh my gosh yeah and a text from reeve (laughs) 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 text from his hubby (laughs) says reeve says meet me in calm we need to talk you got it you got it back when you're on the phone (laughs) i will never find another lover (laughs) <laughs> but yeah he does get a, he gets a text from reeve on his like his like nice little nokia flip phone, flip phone or whatever that has that has like the, the fucking like dirge of cerberus logo engraved on the top of it it's like very Yo, nice looking sick. everything he has is like yeah made of silver yeah i guess um it, it's funny too to uh like look at that compared to what uh yuffie had which when Yuffie was like speaking to vincent it looked like a gigantic brick walkie talkie but i'm wondering is that the phs Oh, it could be. Like, do you think that was the, uh, what was it, the handy phone? Yeah, they made them a lot smaller than three years. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> this is before everything went back, you know, everything c- circled back to being like, no, bigger is better now. Yeah. <laughs> PH- PHS, I'm guessing, if it was the 90s, I'm guessing not a lot of people had cell phones, so it makes sense that it would be ginormous. Yeah, yeah it's like the Zach Morris phone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but now it's 2000, it's the 2000s, everyone has, yeah, the little Nokia or Motorola flip phones. <laughs> Yeah, it, it plays like a little like inversion of the victory fanfare. Like it's not the victory fanfare, but like it's similar when he gets that text message. Oh, I which, don't even like, think I caught that. That's super cute. It's kind of a no. Like I was, I felt a little bad for Vincent because I was like, yo, having a long text message notification sound is gonna be the worst, especially if it's somebody like me texting you, where yeah. I text like four <laughs> things in a row or whatever, like little fragments of sentences. It's gonna be. <laughs> especially back then when like you if you sent a text that was longer than like 200 characters or something it would, oh, it would have it to up break into, it like one two? to five or something yeah. <laughs> he sleeps a lot he probably needs a long notification to wake up oh maybe <laughs> 
But yeah, the the Reeve text says, uh, "Meet me in Calm. We need to talk." Which like he's already in Calm, so that that works out pretty well. Well, I'm, I think it's supposed to be like this is why he's. In I calm. you know I, I thought know. that, but I was like, why the hell would he get the text message notification now? <laughs> which I mean, like I have T-Mobile. That happens to me sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> the festival is really hogging the is really hogging the signal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That's right. everyone's on their phone. It's like when you're at Magfest and you can't get a signal, and you're trying to text people to be like, "Yo, we're we're going to uh, Nando's or whatever." <laughs> but uh, the news on T- TNN is on. It's the, on the literally TV. TNN. I was like, "That's that's good. That's a good joke." <laughs> what does the T stand for? I don't know. Tifa. <laughs> yeah. I, don't know. <laughs> I can only think of Tifa. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tifa news. Uh, uh, to be fair, the only thing that anyone right now can think of is Tifa. <laughs> yeah, for the for political the, figure. For people in the future listening to this or whatever, like we're in a very specific time that's probably only going to last like a week and a half where Tifa and Italy have come together. And like, if it makes no sense to you because you live, you know, a week from now <laughs> or further into the future, you'll just have to look it up. <laughs> Yeah, just type in Tifa Italy, and I'm sure you'll find uh, <laughs> you'll so- find something plenty. interesting. So the uh, but, uh, yeah, it's TNN. Yeah, then, TNN. The news newscasters are going on. Three weeks ago, our crew left for Midgar. However, the group's whereabouts still remain unknown. What really happened down there? So we're something happened. People are disappearing. Yeah, I basically is what we're the gist we're getting right. Yeah, it feels like some kind of like uh, engineering group or maybe like a rescue group went into the kind of center of Midgar and down or whatever, and like never came back. Right. So they're saying that there's like a lab under this actually might be related to the lab we see in final fantasy seven remake. There's like an underground lab. Yeah. There are thousands of people supposedly have been like abducted to have experiments done on them. And, but a rescue team went down there and never came back is kind of what this network is saying. Yeah. I like the presentation of it too, where there's like, I can't remember if it was like soldiers who were kind of like breaking through and trying to like rush in to see like what's going on in this underground lab. Yeah. And the reporters like, like for three years, this has been so, like a, like a sealed door or whatever. Yeah. And like, like the reporters, like looking at the camera and like running along with you know, everyone. Anderson Cooper I was going like, to say being fucking Anderson Cooper over here. Yeah. Real boots on the ground situation. You know? <laughs> Just before we cut away, we hear like, what, is that I, it like, has a little bit of a horror vibe of like this is, is moments there? before the uh the crew this is, is basically the killed mo- or something yeah it's very uh quarantine or slash wreck if you've seen that uh Hell yeah. Found yeah. footage fit movie but uh either way um the festival's going on it's very mardi gras there's like jig dancing happening in the square yeah. calm is happening it's, it's, it's bustling it's, it's much bigger than not very remember. calm at all <laughs> <laughs> I was saying it was like Marty Calm. Yeah, Marty, Marty Calm. <laughs> Marty Calm. Uh, my um, favorite part about it is that um, you see the super fun, happy festival. And again, speaking to me as a 16-year-old I and why I really liked this game, it just pans and it has Vincent just sitting there like angstily at the window, <laughs> like not participating in the fun festival where everyone's having a fucking blast. He's just alone in his room. <laughs> yeah, he's, Listening he's, to My Chemical Romance. He's trying not to think about the funnel cake that he can clearly see somebody eating. It's like, damn, <laughs> that would be good. But uh, um, celebrations are very quickly cut short. There's an explosion. <laughs> yeah, I guess the fucking missiles hit the town. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So I guess we're, even though we're like 40 minutes into this episode, I guess I should warn that this whole game seems to have a lot of like civilian death at the yeah, hands of yeah. like fascist regimes, it seems like. Yeah, so, that's fair. That's it for that. There's a lot of just like domestic terrorism going on. Yeah. This is a very dark game, I've realized. Not cool domestic terrorism like Barrett. Whereas, like, <laughs> oh, like, there's like missions like save the civilians. Like, okay, people getting mowed down by helicopters. That's, I wasn't expecting this. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and it's not like the. It's not like the video game thing of being like, you need to save the civilians. And then you go and save the f- civilians and it goes on. It's like, no, at the end of the level, when you get your results page, it's like, uh-huh. here's how many civilians you saved. And you're like, well, that's 19 out of 25. So rip to those six that died, <laughs> I guess. Because I still was trying to learn how to shoot the fucking gun. It is, when it's they were a little like being brutal. Shot. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty we'll, we'll get to, We'll get to it. But I just wanted to like kind of throw that there now because like, oh, yeah, right. Like as this cutscene is going on, we're like. Yeah, soldiers are but there's explosions going off. Uh, these soldiers who don't look like Shinra, they look a little more cybernetic, mm. uh, blue glowy. Either way, they look kind of more cyberpunk, kind of Tron influenced. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So for as like goofy as this game is, it it the themes that the underlying themes are extremely dark. <laughs> yeah, especially because like now this is like a much uh, cranked up realism compared to like the original Final Fantasy Seven. Yeah. yeah. And, and yeah, yeah, the so these these troops drop from these fucking helicopters that 
zoom like zoom in right speaking of fucking goofy like yeah yeah <laughs> there's got to be a better way to dispatch these soldiers yeah than yeah having things come out of the side of the thing and then have them like a fucking like hangman's noose like just four on each side just like <laughs> hanging there like the they eject them like battle droids in the fucking Star Wars <laughs> <Yeah. prequels. laughs> or it's like um, like a pez dispenser just like me what was the guy's name in the in the hotel in gold saucer mr hangman or something yeah, yeah. just like bounce around <laughs> stuff. it's just like literally they're just like on bungee cords but they're just hanging there like it's so <laughs> they're, basically, um, they're basically like helicopter swat dropping in um design of these soldiers are very kind of inhuman they have like giant kind of uh kind of dome covered visors on them to make them look a little less you know normal yeah. they have like either like a giant like circle in the middle of their head so they they're almost like I don't know. They kind of remind me a little bit of uh, like Half Life or Metal Gear Solid shit, which sure, a lot of this sure. game will have a lot of Metal Gear Solid parallels, yeah, apparently. Yeah, especially when we get to K2. Uh, yeah. Which, uh, when when the first couple troops land and the, uh, the people are kind of freaking out, we get to see through one of their eyes, right? Like we see through their visor. And importantly, like it scans the crowd, and some of the crowd are highlighted yellow, and some of them are highlighted red. So there's like something different about certain people, which will become important later. Yeah. Um, I think and then they just start fucking open fire onto them too. They just start mowing people down. They're apparently being selective with who they abduct. It seems like. Yeah. yeah. Or anybody they don't abduct is literally just getting shot down immediately in the street. But other people are being ugh. herded into like these, um, these like small shipping containers. Yeah. So it, the, Pods. and the weird like inhuman kind of um ones that we were talking about like they they almost look like kind of like dog like there's the dog ones yeah they're yeah. like they're not even dogs though they look like more like humans who've been kind of like yeah. altered to be more dog like you've like from far away they look like dogs but when you look close up it's like oh this is just a guy like yeah. or, like almost like a resident evil like yeah. enemy yeah like, like the like a way dude that, crawling on all fours and the way that the helmet works it kind of almost looks like a xenomorph's like head yeah it's cool. I actually like the design of those characters. Yeah, me too. And they're, they they kind of just like, you know, will tackle some people and like grab them by their clothes and, and take them into these large container, uh, these like shipping container things like you would see down yeah. at the docks. And Yeah. They're like, they're about the size of like a pod moving container. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. From someone's dorm. Um, which these pods are also being dropped from those helicopters. And, uh, and then a, a fucking like attack helicopter just like... <laughs> comes down in the middle of the street with its gun aiming right into Vincent's window. <laughs> like, like whoever's flying this thing is like, yo, fuck whoever's in this specific room. <laughs> Cause I can't think of any reason for like the helicopter to do that other than to be like, I'm going to ruin whoever, whoever's in that room's day. Uh, yeah. I kind of took that as them actually like knowing Vincent was in there and being like, we need to Maybe. take care of, you know, th this is someone that we need to take care of immediately. Maybe. Or they just knew none of the, sol none of the dudes they needed were in there. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. yeah exactly. It's like, well, that one's empty. Let's take it all out. But yeah. They shoot a, uh, a, a huge rocket into the window and, uh, there's an explosion and out from the explosion, we see Vincent just flying <laughs> through the fucking air and doing a like really a cool flip. musical cue. Yeah. Like, Doo -doo -doo. Yeah, he's doing like cool anime flips and shooting his gun down onto the uh, aircraft. Yeah, <laughs> this is like this is maximum rock and roll edge right here. It's, this shit rules. <laughs> also, like the bullets that he's shooting seem enormous because it's like yeah. blowing directly through the helicopter and just immediately decimating it. Yeah, just he's shooting. He shoots six shots out of his three barrels, so we already know that. Like, okay, this thing has a magazine, even though it looks like it has like a revolver. Yeah, to it. it has three. It's like this cold Cerberus because it has three barrels. And yeah, he just completely destroys his helicopter, no problem. He does yeah. the classic cool action Because again, movie thing. this is after Meteor Fall. We've already leveled him up. He's, yeah, he's already level. level 99, you know. Um, but yeah, he does the very cool action movie thing where he like lands with like his hand on the ground and, and oh, like, the yeah, superhero cool, yeah. landing thing with the gun yeah. behind him after like the, the helicopter crashes into the ground. There's a huge explosion and shit. Yeah. And the game pretty real, much... Real hokey. <laughs> extremely and the game pretty much starts from here right like this is where we get yeah. the um chapter one uh title card pops up you get one last look at some people being herded in to containers including a girl with a moogle doll it's very cute um and do you think she can use that to use uh magic like uh Lulu? <laughs> oh yeah like death uh, silence touch or whatever yeah <laughs> <laughs> um but so so we get the title card for chapter one which is sea of flames and um, we see Vincent, like, overlooking the town, right? He's kind of, like, up on um, a almost like a fire escape, but it's, like, on the roof, sort of. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, a little uh, balcony. 
behind him, three soldiers sneak up on him and kind of analyze him, right? And with the little, we once again see through their eyes how they're analyzing him, and we find out that Vincent has blood type A. Yes, so, he's a male, and he's a male. <laughs> and so. we find out he is a male. <laughs> so there you go. Um, <laughs> really, a missed opportunity on the developer's part to make his blood type O negative, but I you know, know who am I, That's to, what I, was who am I too. to judge? <laughs> but uh, once they scan him, we see somewhere else. Right there, somewhere else. There's this girl who has like a, a helmet on like she's in like vr right she's <laughs> alex said she's in meta she's doing meta right now um she's in the metaverse she's in the metaverse, in the metaverse. <laughs> and she and she's she getting says, that sweet baby rays <laughs> and she says found you so i'm assuming that like she can see everything that all of these guards can see like she's somehow either like controlling them or she's just hooked up to a monitoring network and able to see through all of their eyes yeah pretty wild um, and uh, I do like the kind of weird tonal shift though, like because um, the cutscene is like super snappy and like Vincent's very cool. And then as we pull up, the the, the pacing of like the mocap scenes are really silly because it's just like Vincent being like, "Huh, what's going what's on?" Going? <laughs> and just like looking around for like a full like two minutes as we're like kind of scanning him and shit, just like not moving <laughs> on this back lane. It's just it's just really awkward and clunky, but it's like it's I don't know. It's very funny just when he turns into a total airhead <laughs> for the cutscenes. My favorite. Yeah, he thing just about- take, took down a giant fucking helicopter, no problem. But then there's three minutes of me getting shot, being like, "The fuck <laughs> yeah, do I well, do? Okay. How do I how do I, I shoot? What button I think, shoot?" <laughs> I think this actually is extremely FF seven. I'm gonna say that I'm gonna say that this was on purpose because. As soon as gameplay starts, the three soldiers who are on the roof scanning you just start shooting at you, and it doesn't tell you what the buttons are. And, so, and I was like, I was like, no, 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 no. This is a callback to Guard Scorpion, <laughs> where, where it doesn't, where it tells you to attack while the tail's up, and then waits and says it's going to counterattack with the laser. They were like, no, we have to mislead everybody again to make it FF7. <laughs> so it just doesn't tell you. So you're like, for a couple seconds, you're just like, what the fuck do I do? You accidentally use your post. And you're like no, and yeah. <laughs> looking for the button. It's R one, but that's the universal experience in uh, Dirge of Cerberus is yeah. accidentally using an item when you didn't mean to and being like fuck. <laughs> well, the thing is too, the the you might be like, oh well, R ones always shoot right, but the first time you press R one, it's aim. The second time you press R one, it's shoot. So the first time I played it, I pressed R one, and I was like, no, that's aim. So what's the button for shoot? So I tried all the other buttons, and I was like, oh, you have to press R one twice. <laughs> yeah, right. I think I did the exact same thing. And like, th- and and so the way the aim works too is you get like a, a main reticle that's like a, just a circle or like a green one, and it's a pretty and then big a one. smaller one inside of it. At least if you're playing yeah. with controller, this might be different with mouse and keyboard. But right. I think all of us are just playing with. Uh, with controller for the most part but yeah. yeah there's like a small almost like a james bond golden eye um like 007 golden eye on n64 kind of like crosshair uh uh like that appears to let you select which um you know if there's multiple characters on screen which one you can shoot like which yeah. one you can aim for and, and you can select like how sensitive it's like lock on is like yeah. for me because i hate using playing shooters with a stick i just went for like full yeah like, <laughs> full automatic nice um i think i'm using the semi-automatic and honestly just with default settings it plays pretty well like once you finally yeah, get used to it I was I was really surprised that I was like you know like for a game that has this weird of a mechanic with like the third person shooter like it works surprisingly well I I really did enjoy actually running through and like shooting people and getting like a little better each time I had to fight different mobs yeah I agree cool uh, before we dive into the gameplay do you guys want to take a break yeah let's yeah, do it. I think that's a, a good idea we'll we'll let these uh, these three assholes shoot at us for the next five minutes or so <laughs> while we try and figure out how to press r1 twice <laughs> and uh, we'll right. be back in a bit see you then all right one two three. I forgot how to count. That's quite all right. You know what else we forgot how to do? Podcast. Podcast, because we never said that this is the Every FNFF podcast. <laughs> Thank cold you for joining open, us. Baby. Yeah, there's a whole half of a cold open. We're, we're, it's uh, like Breaking Bad. <laughs> yeah, we're getting really Ozymandias up in this. We're doing um, near Automata. We don't show the title screen until the second playthrough. <laughs> um, I yeah. forgot to mention that. Uh, so we saw that girl on her... Uh, uh, virtual headset or whatever. Yeah, 
it pans out. We like, we like, oh, you know, like, I remember uh, Carl was like, oh, it's a woman. Oh, it's a girl because he like, you can tell it's like a teenager or whatever. And you know, it's a teenager because Nomura likes making preteens with big ass feet. Yeah. <laughs> she looks like a cybernetic, like Kingdom Hearts character. <laughs> yeah, that's a good way of putting it. The, uh, Peak the fucking character design. Yeah, the character designs in this game are pretty interesting because you go from, you know, previously existing uh final fantasy characters like vincent or yuffie and then you go to like the newer ones where they kind of look completely different in a lot of ways like um some of the characters that we spoiler uh tifa has a really cool like i don't know gym suit in this one where she has like kind of a like a leather i didn't even know she was in this game hell yeah and like really like baggy knee-length pants or whatever like is it the um advent children outfit I think it is. I That's think a good outfit. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, like, ooh, that looks that looks cozy. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure all of the outfits in this game of the the main party uh, are right from Advent Children. Um, okay. And and if you watch the beginning, like if you don't just hit start right when you uh, get into the uh, in, in into the game, it'll show you pretty much the entire party from Final Fantasy VII. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. So you'll see like Sid. I saw Barrett and stuff. But Barrett has his cornrows and white vest. <laughs> yeah. Very fashionable. Vincent looking great in this one. I think his yeah, outfit looks cool as hell. so good. He needed those extra polygons. His legs are fucking long. He Super like, long. <laughs> he has like Sailor Moon figure. His feet are fucking big. I mean, it might just <laughs> oh, be the great. shoe, the pointy shoe, the pointy metal knight shoe that he's wearing. But... <laughs> those, yeah, for, uh, you know, his horseback riding. He's like, a. <laughs> the more I look at his character, like, oh, he's like a vampire cowboy. Oh, much shit. much like, like another kind now. of cowboy. Do you know what Vincent is? He is wanted, dead or alive. Ooh, oh, it does say that. Yeah. Which it says on the, the when, after the, after the girl says, found you, um, they're scanning Vincent still and says, want to dead or alive, which is interesting because it's like, I mean, I guess that makes sense where you can die in this game. Like they wouldn't just be like, wanted alive because then, yeah, you know, I guess right. you just get captured or something. Um, End up in chapter eight or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so we're like, um, we're on the roof, we're on the rooftops. Yep. And so we, we shoot those first three guys. Right. And we're kind of introduced to some of the mechanics not shooting we just have to figure that one out on our own but we, we can jump we can climb yep we come up to a ladder yeah let's climb on we pick up a potion or whatever we do which selecting items is left on the d-pad and using items is right so that will never become confusing <laughs> and cause me to accidentally use items i didn't mean to <laughs> yep so uh beans uh beans the music starts which is uh matashi hamauzu yeah familiar name i really like this the stage um this fearful happening and it's like very like um kind of it combines some elements that remind me a little bit of final fantasy 10 his like production style yeah but um it's good it's very uh, i i like it I yeah like it the music in this game has been very good uh i know the uh i think the intro uh music was by uh gekt i believe is the name of the uh gekt gekt yeah. gekt that's gekt right. i was thinking of figure gekt. into this in multiple ways so i actually haven't heard his music in this game yet Gact is a huge, huge Japanese artist. I mean, it's at the time, yeah. like, the biggest. So this is like, like, I'm trying to think of like... So I'll who, give you a, a comparison that might yeah. make a little more sense to the American audience. Uh, picture yourself in the mid-2000s, and you're watching Advent Children, and there's a, a song in it by Gerard Way. <laughs> because that is an actual thing gerard way yeah, of my yeah. chemical romance has written a song for advent children i think yeah. we might have talked about this on the podcast yeah it was with some other guy but it wasn't it wasn't gag but it was definitely that era yeah yeah i think i think that was only the japanese release too like yeah I don't yeah think it's, on it's the not American the english release. release at least originally but um the, the uh the intro song that plays during like the beginning cutscene, i think uh mm-hmm. very much reminded me of like almost like skyrim levels of like kind of just how the music plays it's like skyrim meets like dark souls Airy, 2. choiry yeah kind of ethereal kind of like hollow knight like there's a lot of i mean obviously this predates all of those things but uh it's really really good it is it is i agree i think like i think a lot of the soundtrack has held up a lot there's a lot of it is like okay like a lot of this i feel like would fit in right at home at, with final fantasy 7 remake which came out you know 15 years later yeah <laughs> and uh it, it holds up really well and they're yeah. all really good but we are along the rooftop, going yeah. along a wall, shooting some dudes, shooting some, walking dude. along these uh, these fire escapes. Yeah, a lot of the game for us, a lot of like I feel like our podcast is like our content is going to be like walking forward, shooting some dudes, because like that's <laughs> it's that's the gameplay here. Yeah, I don't know how much 
we can even really go into the gameplay just because it's essentially you run down different hallways. We might hallways, mention some items and some like specific some missions Some small here mechanics and, there. and stuff, but it's it's mostly you just run along different kind of like hallway paths and shoot. And that kind of like that that's downplaying it a lot cuz it actually is extremely fun and it, is. it it doesn't seem like it's pretty obvious by today's standards like that that's what it is, but it's still super fun. Yeah. I agree. It is, but um, yeah, the first thing I noticed is like, oh, they really made Calm big in this game. Yeah. 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 I mean, it does look like Calm, but it yeah, is like much it's harder. that kind of German influenced architecture. There's a big wall that we can run along. The blue, it seems uh, like, the blue roofs. The blue yeah. shingles. Yeah, the blue roofs. Um, yeah, like, I think in the original Final Fantasy VII, we see like maybe one square of Calm. Yeah. In this game, it's implying that, oh, yeah, that was just like one section of like endless and endless like. Like Paris level yeah, city or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and there there is a map that kind of uh, shows that at some point too, where like the the square that we're used to with that weird like Mako reactor or whatever is right in the it's center like a, of the it's town. It's like the water tower or something like that. Yeah, that's almost like a hub, and then there's several different like archways out or, or different uh, like I, I'm gonna keep saying yeah. hallways, but different corridors and things like that that all kind of loop around where you can circle back to that area where I just kept walking into that square over and over again because I would go down another path and I would just end up there and be like, oh, a new door that I have to go through. And I'm like, wait, no, this is just the same thing. So I like thinking of a street as a city's hallways now. <laughs> <laughs> what, is, I mean, yeah, yeah. what is Chestnut Street but Philadelphia? I mean, a lot of these homes are row homes and that there's yeah. like no, no separation between the buildings because they didn't want to give you too much <laughs> which, freedoms. Which hallway do you live on? No, I live on 56. <laughs> A lot of foot traffic. Um, Corey would be pleased. There's like no cars in this town. Hell yeah. <laughs> but our, our first mission is to get off of the roofs and onto the wall. And then from the wall, we go down like a small tower onto the actual street level, right? And like not too much happens up here. There is our first opportunity to get a memory capsule up here. Oh, yeah. So hidden throughout the game are these tiny little um, orange vials. like vials. Yeah. And if you shoot them... They, they look like the skill vials from Sonic Adventure 2 you would feed to your chows. It's <laughs> exactly what they are. It's Shadow the Hedgehog. He's in this game. It's fine. Um, but if you shoot them, you're able to rewatch uh, cutscenes, right? Oh. Um, so you can rewatch like the cutscenes in between. Like That used to mean something before YouTube. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it'll be like the recent cutscenes you just watched will be able to be seen by shooting. I, I am literally, as we're going through this, I'm, I'm watching back my VOD of me playing it. So I'm literally just watching me in the past play through it. So those memory capsules. <laughs> this is your own memory little. capsule. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I don't. And interestingly enough, I did not find that. Despite the fact that yesterday, Curtis was like, Carl, be sure you find all the memory <laughs> capsules because I'm not going to. And I was like, I promise you, I will remember to do that. Well, like I was saying earlier about the um, the the save file mechanics for this. If you've are, if somebody who has played this on your memory card has already shot the capsules, they're not there anymore. So yeah. like, only it's, it's one person like, gets to enjoy this. It's like Resident Evil 7 and 8 where they have the little like bobbleheads that you can shoot to uh, yeah. like get a trophy or whatever. I was thinking the uh, the frog statues from Metal Gear Solid 3. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> same thing. Yeah. Um, luckily, with the help of the internet, um, and this game is old enough, that you can go to archive.org slash details slash dirge of Cerberus FF7 Brady Games Guide. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you can just look at where all the capsules are. Fantastic. But yeah, so it, it takes us down to the, the street level, right? And we are introduced to the uh, mechanic of missions oh. uh, for the first time. Because when we run into the first square, we get our first mission, uh, save the civilians. And so this is right after we learn how to use the map. Because this is, Vincent asks, where am I supposed to oh, find that's right. Reeve yeah. or whatever? Yeah. This is right after we learn how to use stairs, which I think, I don't know if it's just the way that the world was designed is very accurate to the street level and the rooftops. Um, trying to be like ac accurate or if it was a throwback to the fucking Shinra stairs because I felt like Vincent <laughs> was running down these goddamn stairs for like an hour. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like as we come out into the uh, into this little clearing, there's like straight up a helicopter just mowing people down. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. First we see like some like a marketplace. Um, pe yeah. People running towards Vincent throughout this whole area. You're going to be seeing like civilians followed by like soldiers which who you have to kind of rush in and take out yeah to save as many civilians and as like the civilians can only take like two shots and that's it so you gotta be quick yeah thankfully there's no friendly fire so you don't have to worry about hitting them right right vincent is a perfect shot at not hitting people 
that he means to, but is a bad enough shot to not hit the thing he wants to hit. <laughs> it's exactly yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> when I was running through here and it was just like, think fast, save the civilians. And they're like, bruh, bruh, bruh. like all the soldiers are like just mowing them down and stuff. I was like, how do I shoot? What do I do? What do I do? <laughs> so like, I think like one or two civilians just got killed immediately. And I was yeah. like, well, I guess uh, fuck those civilians. <laughs> I guess. Safe states. This mission goes through a good uh, portion of the stage too. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you don't just clear it right after this first clearing. It, it's a while before we clear it. Um, yeah, we go through. There's some hidden off uh, alleyways we can go to. There are items. Um, we learn about these little glowy circles on the ground that restore your Mako. Yep. Yeah. I think because there are equipable Mako skills you can use. Equipable like material. Right? Yeah, we get one yeah. right after it. Yeah, so basically, it, it, it when you first step on it, because obviously it's a video game, there's a glowing thing, you're like, oh, what's this? It, it says, Mako point discovered, step on these glowing areas to absorb Mako energy. Mako energy is used to power materia equipped through we uh, uh, equipped to weapons. And then it's like, press L1 to activate mat the materia, which I still could not figure out, because another thing about this is you can have three guns at once. Yes. Um, and you can cycle through them with, uh, I think, L2. Yeah. So when I equipped, I eventually, like right after you find the first Mako point, you'll find your first materia, which is a fire materia, which is just in like, in the, in the world, like in the playable world, it's not like a little ball of materia that you see. It's no, just it's like, like a, a little floating briefcase. Yeah. And, and like the, <laughs> yeah, everything is stored in like aluminum briefcase. Yeah. Like game. <laughs> and then the actual item is like a fucking phone charm looking thing. Yeah. Like. It's just like a little keychain. Yeah, so if if you looked in the cutscene or like anything, uh, Vincent does have like a little charm thing that hangs on the end of his uh, yeah. on the grip of his gun. It's like a little phone charm with a little Cerberus. But I think what is implied is that this the phone charm has a materia slot in it. Yeah. So uh, you can just keep. I it. saw how big materia is in the remake. I don't believe. <laughs> I don't believe this. There can be either this big or like a gumdrop. A little gumdrop <laughs> size material. Yeah, it's, it's either like the the true like everlasting gobstoppers that you get at like an actual candy store that's like white with all the different colors <laughs> in it, or it's like the Wonka ones that you just get at like Wawa. You got the little baby <laughs> material that are like little like uh, vape pods. Like <laughs> yeah, he just yeah. plugs it in. He has to recharge it, you know. Um, but yeah, he, so uh, yeah, you you go into your customized menu um, by hitting you know the the top button on your controller like so like triangle. J just like five of seven, you can go to hit the triangle. Took me, uh, up the took, menu. took me way too long to find that menu. I was like pausing, and then I was like, no, that's not it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I keep um, pausing every time. I kind of love this. I love games that like you kind of customize your loadout. So yeah, you can have three it, weapons you switch between. Event right now we they have three identical weapons, but we can swap out throughout the game barrels, scopes, uh, different like. I forget what we call it, like, the, base, yeah. the base of it. So, like, right now with Cerberus is what we have, but we can switch it out later for another one Yeah, that, like, changes its specs. You can change the barrels and stuff like that. But, yeah, you can equip the materia on it, and for that one weapon, I guess, you can now, if you have Mako charged up, you can fire, a, basically, a fireball at something, right? Yeah, so basically it's, like, your MP, I guess, is, like, in a meter above your health, and... If you end up using the materia, you'll see that it's like kind of charged up, and you can you can fire it for like more damage, um, and it'll deplete that meter. And then the only way that I found, I, I guess they'll eventually be ethers or something, but the only way that you can really recharge that Mako energy is calm, man. Where they've got to have had ethers, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, but uh, nice. yeah, you just have to step on those things to fill up not all of your uh, thing, but a couple charges worth of the fire materia. So yeah. pretty pretty cool system. Like once yeah. you can kind of figure it out that it has to be on whatever gun you equipped it to um yeah. then it's 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 pretty cool we're also introduced in this next little area that we come into to like the card key system so like <laughs> as the game goes on various areas are blocked off by like little blue gates and are just like run around the stage and fight people until you get six a card foot key. tall gates that vincent could just jump over easily if he really wanted to. Yeah, yeah like vincent can clear entire fucking houses when jumping out of the way of a missile that's yeah. mowing him down but it's like huh a card key yeah it's, it's fucking metal you're solid man you gotta find another card key to get to the next area yeah yeah um, it, it makes sense functionally as like a video game thing oh um, it's, so. it's video game yeah Video games. I think I don't know if we talked about it, but you can also I think hit the like circle button to um to do a melee attack, which doesn't yes. do as much damage as the thing, but you know that that can be really handy to save ammo, especially for these uh, destructible crates. Do not waste ammo on them if you can help it. Ooh, apparently I read this. You can just punch them. Yes, I read this online. They said that using your 
uh, physical attacks will destroy missiles and things before they hit you. What? Oh. Yeah. You can just slap a missile you can just slap them out of the air. <laughs> Get out of here. Sick. Get away. <laughs> that that sounds like some real playground bully uh, stuff. Like, oh yeah, dude. Like, if you jump down the pit in Crash Bandicoot, like, you actually have some treasure <laughs> down there, dude. <laughs> Is that, I haven't tried it yet. It does sound a little bit that way. Um, we also get a uh, another mission uh, to save a little girl who's been kidnapped by one of the like dog men people and uh, i think it's i think it's the kid with the moogle doll from the the intro yes. cutscene. yeah although maybe. she was she was put in one of those crates and then earlier right yeah yeah like at the end of that cutscene, she was put into that there's crate. more kids in this game i refuse to believe that there are more than one moogle doll that's uh the tickle me elmo of calm yeah <laughs> but yeah we see Basically, yeah, a girl and her mom get separated and you have to basically clear out the area that the, the, the dog thing drags her into a crate. You can go up to the crate and like open it and it takes like 15 seconds yep. for it to open. But you basically just clear out the area, get the cart card key and everything's fine, right? You shoot. It's a, it's a real like a uh, Western shootout. There's like guys in the windows. Yeah. 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 There's dogs hopping around. This would be fun with a light gun. <laughs> a lot of this game reminds me of like this feels like a, a game I've played at the bowling alley yeah. Yeah. with like a light gun it, it could easily be like a house of the dead like time crisis too rail, rail, <laughs> house a of, rail shooter house of Running the dead gun, like <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um, do you guys like the lore significance of the uh, the barricades? <laughs> oh, wait, and the what? lore significance what? is electromagnetic barricades are used by Deep Ground to hinder the progress of their enemies. <laughs> 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 wow. The only like, ones damn. with the technology. Did you read this on Brady Games? <laughs> no, no, this is literally in the game. That's what tutorial. prompts you when you go up to the, oh. uh, to the gate. It's like, huh, interesting if true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. Deep ground has invented these things called doors. Shit's fucked up. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, but uh, the interesting thing that I found about the key cards is that they're single use only. Yeah. So it's yeah. like you kill like a soldier and he'll drop his key card or whatever, or you'll just find very them fungible. floating there. Yeah, they're <laughs> extremely, extremely fungible. fungible. You uh, you pick it up and you use it once, and then it's gone forever. Like. As someone who has to set up security systems for places with, like, HID, like, swipe cards, that shit is fucking annoying. And if it was, like, a single-use thing, they're also, like, not... They're not super expensive or anything, but, like, you gotta buy them in bulk, and that's a couple hundred bucks. So <laughs> people are just like, oh, yeah, here's your one key card. Like, you every have to time give that somebody, shit out every day. Yeah, every time somebody wants to leave the facility to use the bathroom, you have to badge them again. <laughs> 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 I mean, this actually kind of makes... Um, kind of gameplay kind of interesting because there's later where you, um there's two gates and you have yes. one key card mm -hmm. and like if you go to the left you can actually get like more items but you'll immediately get another key card to go in the right one so if yeah you, but if you only go in the right one you don't get to go, get the extra stuff yes. that's when i realized that they were single use where i literally used one vincent like what threw it on the ground and then walked up and opened the briefcase and picked up another one he's like perfect <laughs> <laughs> he's like that Nailed plus it. 500 gill awesome <laughs> <laughs> i owed oh, i i love the uh the representation of gill on like the world map where it's just gold oh. bars <laughs> just like floating and rotating gold bars uh, invest in gold so somewhere along this way too before we get to the first little boss area uh we also pick up our first scope so we get a sniper scope in here oh yeah and i believe the long barrel as well i think we get the long barrel leading up to it yeah at some yeah, point get the sniper scope and the long barrel long barrel i think is like stronger right more range more long stronger more range but it fires more slowly yes. which your firing rate's pretty fucking fast so I was like, yeah, I'm fine with the long barrel. So I kind of equip it and just rolled with it the whole time. Yeah, that's kind of going to be my main build, I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, yeah. There's also an, an item that we get called a, uh, a limit breaker. Ah, yes. I was about to say. Which is we find pretty either a limit sick. break tutorial. Yeah, you can activate Vincent's limit break and transform into the powerful Galleon Beast by using the limit breaker. Sicko mode. And then you can return to normal. He goes being. fucking sicko mode. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and you can, if you do that, I think it, it lasts for a limited time. Um, but if you hit L and, uh, L1 and R1 at the same time, you can transform back into Vincent. It's, if that's it's, how you choose to live your life. Vincent turns into a dirty little freak. <laughs> 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 yeah, use the limit breaker to turn into an absolute degenerate. <laughs> I, I do like, like it though, because it does like it brings up your HP a lot man. and you're basically just like 
for a while just become kind of like unstoppable. Yeah, your your yeah. your uh, bullet your bullet weapon. What the hell am I saying? The R one button uh, turns into throwing fireballs, and your uh, physical attacks become like way overpowered. Yeah, yeah. and your yeah. like it's HP cool. is like doubled or whatever. It's yeah. it's like fun way to like kind of just like muscle through something. There's like a later boss where you can just like kind of swipe your way through. It. It's pretty yeah. fun. Um. I feel like with these, I'm going to try my best to make sure I use them because they, they definitely have like the elixir uh, uh, like dilemma when it comes to it. You're like, well, I got to save this for the right moment because there, there's a boss uh, not too far into the game who I feel like the game wants you to use it. And after that, I was much more cavalier about throwing them out. Yeah, because like there's a boss. It's like your bullets don't do that much, and so you're like, oh shit, <laughs> and so, like so you go, so you go sicko mode, and you tear them right up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's a weird, it's a weird balance thing because I feel like it's just like oh, throw this item and you win the fight. Yeah, I guess in some ways that reminds me a little bit of Resident Evil too, where you only have like a finite amount of resources because you're going through the stage, right? Yeah, yeah you want to make yeah. sure that you don't use the magnum bullets until like the last fight <laughs> even though it blows off zombies heads one so the first boss and i want to say that i think i just i i have a picture pulled up on my uh oh we forgot to mention oh did we um when we rested the girl we will notice that every time vincent saves someone he does a really cool cape flip yeah oh, he does that's true that's true so it's, uh, so it's every time he saves someone because i i mean not every time but like there's a lot i've noticed it happens a lot where he's he like does thank it, you vincent and he'll just like do his little like cape thing vampire like, yeah cape it's toss. so it, yeah it's so like cool guy like yeah. oh yeah we're gonna have vincent throw his cape behind him in a, in a very cool way <sighs> i actually started taking account of it i only saw that happen <laughs> twice so far in chapter one but i'm gonna try and stay on top of Keep how many times he throws the cave yeah that's incredible so. um, they, he also did do that in a cutscene. i'm not going to count that one just because a cutscene, you know is a, sure, a little sure. little different i agree is it yeah <laughs> <laughs> but uh i i think this area where we fight this first boss i think this is calm from ff7 like the original one because like a lot yeah. of the things from that screen in the uh, ps1 ff7 are there so yeah, I'm not sure if it's this the, area the or the pump. next time we oh, maybe, fight it again. Maybe. Because the next one, the next area has like a city hall. I don't remember. Oh, that's that right. Was. There is like a little city hall. I wonder if that's supposed to be the shops. Yeah, yeah. There's also like the shops on the up, upper level, remember, along the wall. Yeah. So maybe this is kind of warming up. But like, I think towards the end of this chapter, that is maybe where. You're probably calm, right. That's my feeling, at least. Let's say it kind of looks like that area. Um, it has the feel reused of it. assets because <laughs> it has the it has that like tiny Mako reactor is that what that is I guess uh, yeah the of it. it's a Mako water to pump it's like the brass yeah. Mako reactor or whatever <laughs> it's a yeah it's a I don't know a gasoline powered Mako pump probably <laughs> or some shit like that but um they uh as soon as we walk in a like another one of those attack helicopters shows up and we fight it as our first boss right this is the sonic adventure 2 first boss again we're fighting a helicopter yeah. right yeah. oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is the hind d fight from metal gear solid <laughs> one where you fight liquid in a helicopter <laughs> nobody remembers that fight i remember it <laughs> yeah i remember okay <laughs> i think i remember in which uh, metal gear solid game the first one like all oh, of them. Okay, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, uh, don't you fight a h- helicopter in every one of those games? <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> well, but, specifically Hind D. Yeah, the Hind D is in the first one. Hind D's nuts. <laughs> Kicking his Hind D. <laughs> but uh so here's the here's my trick for this fight, okay? Play it on an emulator so that the <laughs> frame rate slows down to like half speed and you're so you have so much time to dodge the missiles and fire on them <laughs> because the game is going so incredibly slow. So, like, this boss, no problem. It's just very, very choppy for me. Yeah, he just circles he, he circles the area. By he, I mean the, the helicopter is a boy. We all know. Um, <laughs> yeah, boys are, are boys. Uh, yeah, helicopters are boys. Airplanes are girls. <laughs> Except for male planes, am I right? Because they're carrying mail. <laughs> word mail. Um, it's good. Yeah. yeah. Guys, Sorry. I gotta go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the pattern is like, what? It's like circling the square, occasionally shoots missiles at you. Yeah. yeah. And then there's like also baddies on the ground fighting you too. Yeah. Occasionally yeah. it'll pop in and like actually get a little close to you and try to fire a missile or something. And then it'll. Which you can actually hit it like if you are. Um, it's called the Galian Beast um, when you're doing yeah. Limit Break. You can't actually like just completely hit it if it gets low enough. Yeah. Pretty fun. Oh, sure. sick. You can get some hits on it. 
Which can be fun if you're just running around with a limit break going and just like swiping dudes back and forth and then the airplane comes in like, yeah, fuck you too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but there's really not much about it. Uh, I guess the thing is like... Called the fu- dragonfly. The dragonfly. The, the obstacle in this is that you are using the well in the middle to uh, escape its missile attacks, but you also can't shoot around the well. And likewise, as it circles around the square, it's going behind buildings. So you have mm-hmm. to like wait till it emerges behind buildings to shoot it. That's kind of the. So we got to have that here. long scope on one of your weapons or. Yeah. You can put the barrel and just basically make a little sniper gun in one. To yeah. It's, it's helpful to. that we just got that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, but it's not too bad. Um, it goes yeah. down pretty fast. Pretty easy. It shoots him with missiles and he jumps into a building and the building is not affected by the missiles. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Everything is fine. This I, beautiful, I do like that. This stu- the German stucco is uh, quite tough. It, it's pretty <laughs> funny that like when you see Vincent shooting at it in like the cut scene, um, you, like there's bullet holes that are like getting like blown into the, the front of the, the thing as it's like firing missiles at you and stuff. I don't know. It's, it's, it's really cool. It, <laughs> and then Vincent does like a one-armed cartwheel to like escape it into the building. Yeah. Yeah. N- nothing can get through that door. That, that sturdy wooden <laughs> door right. of column was uh, built, built very well. <laughs> and as soon as that's over, we go back to that uh, young girl wearing the helmet, right? And she takes off her helmet and says, Vincent Valentine. We found you. And her eyes like glow orange. And then we go back to Vincent. There's actually a dude behind her. Oh, too. that's right. That's right. We actually get to see that dude. Yeah, that's right. Brute. He's kind of a gorilla shaped man who's all blue. He's got strange kind of proportions dark. with like yeah, how I mean, his arms again, are very, like, like, just ripped. Yeah. If you took the furry slider on Kimari and moved it down a couple points, <laughs> that's, that's this character. It's a big blue man. He's got more of the gamer eyes. hunch than Kimari, but you know, <laughs> Kimari stands up very, very straight. This guy's a little hunched. The girl is voiced by Carrie Walgren, who's in a lot of uh, Final Fantasies. She's mm. Ash in Final Fantasy XII. Oh, nice. Ariana in Final Fantasy XV. And she's Courtney in Metal Gear Rising, which this game kind of reminds me of. Like, <laughs> if, they re- if they remade this game, Platinum Games should totally do it because they did Bayonetta and that Metal would be Gear really Rising, good. which is just the right kind of category of camp and yeah. just completely over the topness. I think it would work very well. Agreed. Uh, but yeah, but, uh, so we're back to Vincent. Yes. And, and we're just in a little house. And uh, the door is now locked for some reason. I did try leaving the door that we just came in, and it was like, this door is locked. And I was like, you're on the inside of the house. You can unlock it. <laughs> Vincent's very smart to lock the door to make sure the helicopters don't get inside. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, lock your doors or else helicopters will come in and get you in the night. Um, we do find our first jukebox here. And as everybody oh, really? knows, um, guns are sold out of the jukebox. And apparently modified as well. So you can upgrade your weapons and shit at it. Oh, I don't even know if I found that. I, I just remember yeah. finding the short barrel right here. Yeah, oh, yeah. the short barrel here as well. Which shoots faster. Yeah, the first door on the right has the... Because uh, all, the, all the doors in the hallway can be opened. Oh, um, I just assumed none of the doors could <laughs> open. Yeah. It's very hard to tell what doors are interactable in this game. Yeah, yeah. it should probably be more on the lookout. Is this the first instance of Final Fantasy VII using jukeboxes as shops? Because that's a big thing in Remake. Oh, that's true, that's true. The kind of vending machine jukeboxes. Yeah. yeah. No tunes, be. though. It'd be cool if you can buy music. But. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, so at these, you can, uh, you can spend the gill that you've earned to buy more ammo, uh, modify your weapons, um, which is kind of neat. I like the way you modify in this game. And we can probably get into it with more detail later because it, it isn't really uh, relevant right now. Right now, we just basically have enough money to change like Cerberus from Cerberus 1 to Cerberus 2. You right? can like, yeah. level up your... By level up, I mean like upgrade, but it's like an up next level. Yeah. And upgrade. that changes a little ways down the road. But for now, that's about all we can do. Uh, you can also upgrade the pieces as well. So you can upgrade like the long barrel and stuff like that. Another nice thing about the the customization of it is it has one of the, uh, uh, my mind always goes to Pokemon and like generation four beyond where they kind of show you your Pokemon stats and yeah. how they all line up and you can see like, oh, okay, well this is a lot stronger and, and not as fast, but yeah, oh, yeah. yes, that has the web graph yeah, like, yeah, when, yeah, when yeah. you're changing the like aspects. So I think it was generation three when you can enter them in beauty contests and shit. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You gotta has, feed, like, little... feed your gun some poffins. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this most beautiful gun ever. <laughs> Yuna's gun is the most beautiful gun ever. There you go. Oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, we're just in this house, right? Yep. And then on the upstairs, second floor, it turns out that, like, 
the the room where that little girl and that giant guy are and like it looks like they're in some lab somewhere right like somewhere in, meanwhile and yeah, like some dark in the, space. Yeah. In the fucking fortress of doom but no it turns out they're just in this house and they've just decked out <laughs> one tiny little like office room to look like the fucking fortress of doom yeah, that's their <laughs> they, that's their pod hole <laughs> yeah they just bust through the wall and you can like see the computers and shit in the hole why like, did they do the that room. why, why did they, they do pre- this <laughs> Why were they in their like security room office while there's like a fucking gunfight outside? Like, yeah, yeah. You're just on your computer tapping away like, God, there's fucking neighbors. This <laughs> also, <laughs> there's like explosions and shit happening. With that, that brings up another question, which it's like, did the fucking helmet even help the girl find you? Because she was like Vincent Valentine. He was already it's here. Like, you, uh, he just dove into the fucking house that you're in after a, a, a helicopter <laughs> yeah. fired giant yeah, we, missiles. We finally like, found you in the way that you just now entered our house. Like, like yeah, it's just... like someone knocks on my front door. Like you guys come over to record the podcast here, and you knock on the door, and I'm like, ah, Curtis and Alex, I finally found you. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. I, but you I, didn't do anything. I guess. Yeah, you did, not. <laughs> yeah, did not. Did not. <laughs> but yeah, they like they like uh, the the big guy literally punches down the whole wall, which like the the wall. <laughs> Are There's a door right next. There's to a it. door, <laughs> which like the door is too like, small dude, for him. Dude, this is your get house. <laughs> this is your lab area. Yeah. Like, this does not- remind. I feel like they really should have done the thing for with like Scott Pilgrim. They punch him through the wall and he, he pans right, and he, the guy, the the vegan guy, comes to the door immediately. Like, <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. Right out of the giant yeah. hole in the wall. <laughs> oh my god. But, uh, but yeah, the uh, the girl and the dude are there. Uh, the girl is like as we can see is quite short we can't tell if it's i'm, I'm assuming it's because she's like i don't know a preteen yeah given her big feet that kind of usually means she is uh underage in anime terms <laughs> but uh she's got her glowing orange eyes and she says the proto materia give it to me or tell us where it is so sh- so she's looking for something called the proto materia and vincent kind of doesn't seem like he knows what she's talking about like what the proto materia is and this dude just walks out like the big guy and just says, hail vice, hail vice, hail vice. Yeah. And as you were saying in my in my chat the other day, any character that we're introduced to who's saying hail anything is usually like not a good guy. So, yeah. Like, usually hail before like, someone's flag. name. Yeah. That's yeah. definitely a Unless you're flag. a meteorologist. Hail not good. <laughs> <laughs> even then. Hail. Yeah. Not even good. then. Hail not good. Um, hail eminent <laughs> hail eminent uh, but, uh, yeah, but they, they have some soldiers with them who also say hail weiss or hail vice yeah. that means white probably right What's Indeed. That? sorry we'll talk about we'll talk about colors later Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's a good point um, but yeah then that starts I guess kind of like a mini boss thing I, I wouldn't even really yeah. call it that it's just a bunch of dudes run in from like the computer room <laughs> hole <laughs> Yeah, and, uh, and again, there is a hallway attached to this room that we have access to on the left of Vincent. So, like, there's a bunch of dudes already in this room because we don't see them enter from the hallway. Maybe Vincent locked that door too, and then they all just like <laughs> single like file march out of this thing, and we just shoot them as they come out. Like, yeah, not not a very good tactical decision. And also, so the big dude who looks like he could easily fuck us up, he just punched through a goddamn wall. He's just kind of standing there with like the 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 kid as well. And if you try to shoot at them. Them, there's like a barrier so i guess like, yeah it makes sense final fantasy like you know protect or shell or whatever yeah but yeah you can't you can't attack them but i was like oh cool i'm gonna have to fight this guy yeah nope it's just like five dudes run out and you <laughs> make well you think you're about to because he's like uh challenge accepted then she faints right yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, so like, he's ready to square up but then she kind of just keels over yeah, and he says, luck is on your side, and he picks up the girl and walks away. He picks her up very comically, too. He, like, just, his hand just, like, grabs her and holds her, like, like she's, like, a soda can or something, and he's just, like, <laughs> walking away with her. This guy is huge, but I think that why he says luck is on your side, because we hear someone, like, down the hallway saying, this way! Or whatever, like I, I think the the it's like you could it's like you could easily just take out anyone that comes down this hall. You're so fucking huge. I think the thing is that like the the tides kind of turned away from him because like not only did he hear people like supposedly Vincent's backup or somebody coming in, but also that little girl fainted too, and he's like responsible for her. And he's like, yeah. well, I can't fight Vincent and these people coming down the hallway and protect this little girl at the same time. So all right, you got lucky. I'm gonna leave. Yeah, but yeah, he just picks her up like a cat. Yeah. yeah, and he tells yeah, us the scruff of her neck. <laughs> he tells us that his name is Azul. Yes, before leaving, which is another word for blue. 
Yes. Whoa, man. Which is pretty spot on because his hair and whole outfit is blue. Is blue. That's probably <laughs> where the blue ends with this Is that guy. his name? Or is that just like... I am blue. I am blue. Like the blue. Daba D, Daba Die. Oh, we don't know his name. We don't know his full name yet. Yeah, yeah, we don't know his full name, but spoiler alert, it gets even more blue. But guess who is running down the hallway to meet us? It's our Some old guy. friend. An old asshole who I don't like, but... Yes. But past It's Reeve! It's Reeve. He's gotten kind of more daddy than we remember him. Yeah, he's looking extremely daddy. He's got a nice, like... When you say I mean, daddy, always... I think more of an um, older cousin. I wouldn't let this man daddy to me. Mm -mm. No, no, no. <laughs> well, I've, I always associate him with, like, the youngest member of, like, the Shinra, like, crew. Yeah. When he was working there, but I guess it has been three years, and I guess that is old enough for him yeah. to be kind of a little bit more adult like. He's the youngest member of the Shin Ra crew. <laughs> but he has a very, like, very rich voice as well. Like, yeah. there's a lot of interesting voice actors. Like, I was about to say the um, the guy who voices Azul is like um, Brad Abril, who you may know as the announcer for Professor Membrane in <laughs> Vader Zim. <laughs> and the, oh, and nice. the worm guys in Men in Black, the little worm men. Oh, aliens. hell <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Damn, that's kind of the exact opposite of the worm guys. <laughs> yeah. But like, uh, Reeve is played by this guy named Jameson Price, who was like the colonel in Akira, and he was like Gojiro and oh. uh, or Sojiro in, uh, in Persona Five. He has another like oh. very like it's like these guys have beautiful voices. They have like a, these amazing voice casts. Yeah. And then we get into a conversation that I think is very like Vincent Valentine. Are you all right? I think this is very typical of like video games and especially edgy media around that time, where like they throw like so many fucking terms at us in one conversation where I'm like <laughs> slow the fuck down you act, you have to establish this shit first you can't just come in and be like here's a shitload of proper nouns that you have not heard up until this point but yeah. alright <laughs> um, I do I do like the back and forth between Vincent and Reeve where Reeve, uh, Vincent's like Reeve nice to see you again not a very interesting outfit though Reeve, if you don't remember, was uh, catchy. So, wow, uh, spoilers. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but uh, yeah, then Reeve like laughs and he says, "Yeah, it took me a while to decide which costume I'd put on for today," which is very <laughs> funny is and gets uh, funnier uh, later as well. Uh, but yeah. it gets more confusing later. He has, I think we'll, we'll talk <laughs> yeah. about later in the game. Is like, wait, yeah. yeah. We're getting pretty Who meta. Who is Reeve now? Like, <laughs> uh, he also has a mullet. If you if you yeah, look closely, he does. A mullet. <laughs> I support it wholeheartedly. Not like a cool, trendy, hipster kind of mullet, just like a weird mullet. All business in the front. All very business much. in the front. Like, like very like, sharp, like cool anime bangs, like this nice even, but in the back it is like going straight down his neck because, yeah. you know, everyone in this game has long hair, I guess. Yeah. It was a, it was a good time for long hair in, the, <laughs> in media. But yeah, so, he's like, okay, enough of the small talk. Who are those soldiers that just left? And Nintendo's like, oh, no fucking idea that that dude called himself Azul. And Reeve is like, Azul the Cerulean of the Sviet? Yeah. Blue the blue, <laughs> blue the blue of the spits. The spits. That can only mean it's like what the fuck. Like Curtis is saying, like I don't. None of this means anything, dude. <laughs> Slow so down. That could only mean, and then, yeah. Like gets cut off by of like course. some soldier coming through. Yeah. Yeah. So, right? so uh, some of these soldiers start entering the house, right? Like soldiers who don't look. Uh, the same as the ones we've been fighting. They look good. They have like little comrade, like uh, red beret. Red Either berets like and beanie. or red beanies, depending True. on their rank, I guess. Team Zisu. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what were they looking for? The spotted zebra fish. <laughs> but like, it's really funny because Reeve, um, oh, sorry, Vincent immediately is like, like we barely established nothing for what, what Vincent's motivations are. You just know that he's meeting Reeve and then immediately after this conversation was barely started is like, whatever you're up to, I want no part of it. Yeah. Well, he has to do, he has to do the cool, like, uh, what it was earlier, like escape from New York thing. You know what I mean? The snake Plissken thing. I, I don't want any part of it. Leave me out of this. Yeah. Like if this was escape from New York, they'd have to like put a like, fucking explosive collar on him or some shit. God, yeah, Reeve, Reeve takes collar, exception sorry. to it as well. Cause he's like, but you fought alongside us three years ago. We need your help once more. And then like a bunch of fucking shot. gunfire just happened. <laughs> he fucking dies. Which, so I want to talk about that too, because he immediately just gets shot. But the way that he that interaction lined up. up, Vincent's talking to him. He's like, I want no part of this. And he's like, oh, but you have to. And then just gets fucked. I thought it was going to turn around and Vincent was going to be like, fuck no. Like, just <laughs> him <laughs> him up, like, I said no. <laughs> I yeah, fucking Vincent hate Vincent just lights him up. <laughs> but he gets, uh, he gets lit up from off screen somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, then very f comically, his entire body like collapses. Right. So Vincent like immediately takes out the guy who shot Reeve. Yeah, yeah. 
and and he picks him up. He like he's gonna cradle him. You know what I mean? Like 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 you would for somebody who's dying or whatever. And mm-hmm. as he picks him up to cradle him, Reek's body <laughs> falls apart. Like his head comes off, and like his arms fall off, and he's like hollow inside, like a crash test dummy. Yeah, it's and so fucking, fucking funny. And like Ked she like rolls out of him, right? Like the cat version. Yeah, yeah, it's very cute. Um, I said in the chat, uh, Shrek Jr. <laughs> <laughs> and also, like, is a Scottish accent is delightful. Which is I was going to say, fitting. he has an entirely different voice as Ketchy. Which makes sense, given that you know we discussed the 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 name Ketchy and like its its origins and yeah, shit, and yeah. it's like kind of like, Gaelic, kind of yeah. inspired like folklore. So it totally makes sense, but also it's just like okay, well, what the fuck? Like <laughs> Reeve controls Ketchy, and now Ketchy is inside Reeve, which is a really funny and good inversion and stuff. But it's like, dude, Reeve, you were just your character that has a completely different fucking insane accent inside yourself so you were doing your normal voice and now you jump out and you're like oh yeah, like yeah. <laughs> that was a close one so whenever he whenever he uses catchy right here's what i choose to believe is happening okay that there is like he's a, a vtuber he, yeah he's, a, he's essentially a vtuber <laughs> there, there's a there's a voice modulator when he speaks into the cat version of the body right <laughs> that changes his accent to sound scottish but he has an accent inverter he has an accent end. inverter <laughs> on the human one so, or or it's just like a very like he changes neutral channels. kind of like american accent right and so like you can just layer them i up. will use my credit card <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, I'm the more Kevin of him mcallister <laughs> the father <laughs> <laughs> Credit card, you got it. <laughs> but yeah, so he's a VTuber and he's planning a karaoke stream on the uh, 14th. So, you know, come hang out when he does it. He can't keep it as a VOD because, you know, Twitch will take it down. <laughs> but uh, Ketchy has a, a delightful Scottish voice, um, played by Greg Ellis, who is in Pirates of the Caribbean as an officer. So maybe your brother knows him, Carl. Oh, yeah, maybe it's my brother. <laughs> <laughs> maybe see if we can get him on. <laughs> God, that would be fucking incredible. Are you kidding me? That <laughs> the, really per- the person who voiced the, <laughs> the I'd Scottish be like, we version. have a we have a very, very important announcement as a podcast to make. We did it. We got him. <laughs> we got Ketchy to come onto the podcast <laughs> to defend himself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Instead of like asking him what it was like to like voice the character, we're just like, why the fuck would you do that to Marlene? <laughs> yeah, it's like what the fuck who the fuck do you think you are you have main character syndrome where after like all the horrible events happen you just pop up and you're like hey i'm still alive <laughs> <laughs> miss me <laughs> oh boy i came in at a bad time <laughs> <laughs> well, i don't know why i'm doing like choose goose or whatever <laughs> <laughs> or can- cap- like a candy king or whatever yeah we now canonically have his his voice like i think it's yeah. the same voice as he has in advent children which i have not I, seen i think yet. Uh, yeah i think that's all uh across the board like this, yeah, uh, this, all this is very is much, children. and I think just like the way that this game came about was they kind of had an idea to make this sort of action Final Fantasy game, and then they were just like, "Oh, well, we actually want to go deeper into the Final Fantasy VII extended universe, so that's why it's so Advent Children." But yeah, he's catchy. Rolls out. He's just jumping around. He's like I said, Shrek Junior. Ah, never was good at fighting. Luckily, I came out wearing Reeve. You're really not a bad bloke, are you, Vincent? You pretend not to care, but you always come through in the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so Vincent is like, all right, what you do you want me to do? You have a heart of gold. Don't let them take it from you. All you have to do is pretend to die to get him on your side. I know, right? I yeah. know, I know. <laughs> it was a whole setup. Yeah, he's fucking gaslighting Vincent, dude. And literally the only, like, plan that he has is like, okay, let's run them out of town. Let's run those lads out of town! I kind of like, I like his voice so far. Oh, it's yeah, like no, me too. I, I really do. I think it's, uh, again, I think with this, I'm just fully embracing how campy and goofy and stupid yeah. it is and just being like, no, it's good, actually. It brought <laughs> but, me back to Nino Cooney, who um, the little um, little fairy sprite uh, drippy you have also has a Scottish accent. Uh-huh. I got to wonder where on the on the Mike Myers scale, where does this fall? Is this uh, a Shrek Scottish accent or a fat <laughs> bastard Scottish accent? <laughs> it's a little closer to fat bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Ketchy with Moogle is a kind of a fat pass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so like, um, we're essentially like let out of the house again, right? We're able to go back into the square uh, after we agree to to run these guys out of town. Um, and we're, we're basically just in the square, uh, the square again, right? Just yeah, you can just go. Dudes. So I went back in the house and I like 
went back upstairs and I farted around. There's a janitor's closet you can go into. There's nothing in there, but nice. Can. Is there a mop that deals? There is. Damage? Oh no, there's not. But no, there, there, <laughs> there is a, a mop bucket. in there though. A bucket and a mop. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, you were able to go into the surveillance room too. Right? Yeah, I went into the surveillance room. It's right next to the surveillance room. Is where I was like, so, oh it, shit, there's a bucket. <laughs> <laughs> there's a. It's very Fallout. With like all the just the, the yeah, big like yeah. tube televisions on the wall. After we leave the square again, like on our way out, we're introduced to the WRO, which are these yeah. soldiers we were talking about with the red beanies. This guy sounds like a very important character because of his voice, but I don't think he is. I was wondering. So there's okay. So there's generic male WRO member with the beret. There's generic female WRO member with like the with like the little cap the cap and then there's this guy with the red beanie and I'm like is this is this one guy or is this also a generic <laughs> member and I can't decide if I think he's like g- super generic or if there's just this one guy who and like he's everywhere he has a British accent for some reason yeah because he talks and he always has the same voice and I'm like no is he just a dude is he just like the guy maybe we'll bump into him later yeah. I don't know. maybe he'll be a recurring like like Charlie or whatever in fucking remake. It was a guy who yeah. is, he's, he basically acts as like a lore and ch- a shop. Yeah. Right. Oh he, yeah. Chadley. He, yeah. Chadley. <laughs> yeah. He basically tells us that, uh, Reeve has started his own private military firm. So that's fine. Yeah. That's um, totally a normal thing to do. They, yeah. My days of being with an evil organization are over. Now it's time to start my own paramilitary. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, the WRO, it was what called the like world, like rejuvenation or something like that. Like a rebuilding world restoration. Yeah. Worst Reeve organization. <laughs> Worst Reeve organization. <laughs> Good. So, are we supposed to like assume this is kind of like a communist, like small, small military kind of like for the people kind of thing? Not for Shinra, not capitalists. We'll it's more like, no, we're making this we'll, world a better place. We'll see how long that lasts. <laughs> see, if it yeah. was, yeah, I'm wondering about that just because it's Reeve at the helm. So, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> a guy who was, if it was in charge Barrett, of like, if it was maybe Barrett, they're all VTubers too. Maybe he has yeah, a whole it, army of robots. <laughs> yeah, so it's going to be like Attack of uh, 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 Phantom Menace, the, the droid, yeah. uh, droids versus the gun. He would be the guy to hire for that, honestly. Mm. If he like, if he's yeah. making like fake little like ghosts in the shells or whatever. But anyway, yeah, we meet the RWRO and we have a, this guy's a shop. You can buy more stuff, no. rations. And, so right? he has um, rations to heal both MP and HP, and they're all free. So you yeah. may as well oh. just buy five of each. <laughs> yeah, I bought five of each. I, yeah. I think it only does a little bit, like a tiny amount, but you know they're rations, so they're yeah. for emergencies i guess um but he also can give you some information on uh information about the rwo and directions to the church and every time you start any of the options he d- has this animation where he like holds his gun and it's like very like huh, and he goes sir <laughs> <laughs> nice are you like a general now on our old general vincent yeah <laughs> general vincent well he, he refers to uh reeve as like genova war hero reeve so like maybe yeah. like the genova war whoa <laughs> yeah so maybe they give like vincent the same kind of like oh he's a war hero the wr RRO was originally established three years ago after Meteor Fall. With Genova War hero Reeve Tuetsi at its helm, our organization is dedicated to aiding the healing process of the planet, as well as protecting it from any who attempt further harm. Yeah, like it sounds like a good organization on paper. Yeah. yeah. yeah we're, <laughs> we're all sitting I just here. Don't we're all sitting here Reeve, in the dude. real world, yeah. <laughs> Reeve is the only person with a mullet that I do not trust. I don't mean, <laughs> Other than Hulk Hogan, I, I, I guess. I didn't vote for him. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like it? Vote him out. So... We are then on our way to the church, um, which there, get to the church. there's another little like uh, street <laughs> yes, area for directions to church. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like, but there's another like street section, right? Where we're kind of like running through the streets of calm. There's another uh, mission where we protect WRO members uh, from some of the, um, the, uh, the bad guys. Have we gotten the bad guys name yet? Deep ground. I think it was. Yeah, I think it's been mentioned. I don't know explicitly but like when we get the key card it's like this is employed oh, by right. deep ground to p- hinder their enemies movements it's like okay yeah deep ground okay i know yeah, yeah. the deep state <laughs> <laughs> but uh yes yeah, so we have to run through there i don't really think there's anything too important or amazing in this you just help some guys shoot out in some squares yeah more gates more memory capsules yeah um not a whole lot of civilians this time Right. Yeah, I think at this point it's more so like the civilian snipers on the roof. Ooh, it's true. We get the Griffin, which is like the machine gun. Well, it's it's like the machine gun, except it's not automatic, right? It's like it's painfully can, slow. 
Yeah, it's very slow, but you can hold down the L1 trigger and it'll fire at a you know rate Just where put you put the don't short barrel on it, dummy. Uh, yeah, I see. But she didn't think of that. I do like using it though. It it is a good gun. Yeah, but uh, we go corner and like I don't know if it was the I'm assuming it was a WRO thing, but they said snipers on the roof. Yep. Which you know, like Panic at the Disco, like <laughs> Fiddler on the roof. It's my favorite. If musical. I was a rich man. Yeah, that was a pretty fun part too. I, I I usually like a mission that involves like scope. Yeah, it's the help. The, the vocal cues are very nice instead of just being like shot at and like where the fuck are they coming from? Or yeah, whatever. yeah, yeah. It's not horrible. No, it's not. It's, um, it's pretty good. Some good game design. But we get in, eventually get to the church, right? Yeah. Do you guys get the Cerberus relief? It's just an accessory that increases defense, so yep. I probably will never use it. Yep, that's on the way as well. Uh, actually, you know what? This square does not have the fountain thing in the middle. So I so maybe think the last one was the FF7 Calm. Maybe. Whatever. It doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. Um, maybe they both are. Maybe, maybe the real one was in our hearts. Yeah. Um, at, at this one's where the church is. You know what I love about this area? So basically, we, we come up to the church. There's a giant opening, uh, an open area. And the Bodes well. the helicopter plane comes back, right? And we fight it again. Except this time it's, it's like... It's a dragonfly GL, yeah. which means good luck. <laughs> <laughs> what which you is, don't need for it because it's also a pretty easy fight. It is. Uh, what I think is cool about this area, because I was like, well, I'm doing it for the podcast now. I really should, like, you know, discover everything. So, like, you can walk up on the stairs and go behind houses and shit. Like, there's no need to. Like, there's a lot of area that's just kind of, like, useless in a way for this just fight. Empty area? Yeah, but, like, there's actually, like, Mako restore points and shit back there. And so, like, if you run out nice. of MP, you can go back there and get some. It's interesting. Which is kind of interesting, too, because I think once we get to the end of the chapter, um, when your stats page come comes up, there is a thing where it's, like, th it gives you a Mako gauge of some point. Uh, mm. of some. So I don't know if that means you got all of the Mako points or how much Mako you had at the time of the uh, end of your mission. I'm not really sure how that works, but I should yeah. look into that for next week. But uh, yeah, so we fight the uh, the dragonfly again. This time, I think it, it's it's still easy, but it's a little harder only because it can shoot a volley of missiles that there's nothing to really hide behind now. But what is easier is because um, it is stuck kind of flying low. You can just go sicko mode and just wail on it. Yo, you can yeah. pop sicko mode. You can do the limit breaker and like just rip it the fuck up. Yeah. You know what I just thought of given that this thing's name is dragonfly? Have you guys ever seen the shit post of Lenny Kravitz fly away? Where it's just like, <laughs> like a dragonfly, a dragonfly. <laughs> it just keeps saying dragonfly over and over again. <laughs> Have you guys seen that? Uh, no. I know the one you're talking about, yeah. I'll, I'll send it to you guys. Um, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, he's not too bad. Um, yeah, pretty easy, especially if you use the limit breaker. You just become, you know, the big old boy and... Uh, you can just Big old boy. throw a bunch of energy blast. You can fucking Dragon Ball Z Kai blast him. Or <laughs> that's what I. That's how I beat him. Was just throwing those fucking things. And like, you can stay Galleon Beast for a long fucking time too. Yeah, so. I didn't have it run out. I, I it, it's funny too. I was like, well, this is chapter one. This is the second like big boss fight. It's got a lot of circumstance around it. I should probably just use the limit breaker now. And then I started using it and started like attacking with it when he had like three quarters of health left and just absolutely destroyed him. And then like the cutscene that happens after it, you're just Vincent, like regular Vincent. Yeah, yeah. Just like on top of the church steeple. And then like Vincent turns into How the galleon. How did you get up there? Yeah. And he turns into the galleon beast yeah, to like yeah. take down the thing. And I'm like, that seems like it was a waste of resources, Vincent. Yeah, like yeah. <laughs> if you can do it without the limit breaker, then why don't you can either jump or turn the beast anytime he wants to, as long as it's cool timing. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, so he destroys the um the dragonfly for good from after jumping off the steeple of the church. Um, and the really big ass moon behind him. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, that is a really cool fucking scene. And uh, some some more soldiers, some more deep ground soldiers show up to shoot him, but like a an armored van drives in between them. They shoot at him and he kind of lazily holds up his arm, just like, eh, yeah, yeah, like yeah, stop, stop it. Yeah. But an armored van drives in between them. It doesn't even look like an armored van. It looks more like a truck, like a like a camper. I assumed it was. It, it has to be right, or else they would just like puncture armored. everybody it looks inside. It just looks like a streamliner. It though. does. It does. It does. I, I, yeah. It, it doesn't. 
tell you that it's armored visually. I just knew that it was armored because none of the people inside are just Swiss cheese. <laughs> but a bunch of like WRO members pop out of it and Reeve pops out of it who has a gun. Another Reeve, but this time he has a gun. Yeah, yeah Reeve he's gun with a Reeve, gun. dude. He's gun Reeve. Reeve has given me trust issues already. I'm like, are, like, are you the real Reeve? Yeah. <laughs> So you're just like pulling on his head every time you meet him. Um, uh, also, I, I like the uh, the difference between um, uniform, both for uh, the WRO and for Deep Ground, where it's like they have like the standard issue uniform, but it's different for ladies. Yeah. <laughs> ladies got a show. Yeah. Both sides have lots of thigh for the ladies. It's They're all, all wearing short thigh. shorts on yeah. both. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Everyone gets short shorts if you're a lady in either Deep Ground or the WRO. Yeah. yeah. It's like they like, from- <laughs> they like kidnap people and test. Like they do like awful, insane tests on them and turn them into like freakish mutants. But mutants still got to wear the short shorts. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Keep those, keep those leg meat nice <laughs> and uh, clean. So it's basically like everything from like the waist up is like your standard issue, you know, not really gendered too much uh but then the waist down it's like the the lady soldiers just have to wear <laughs> have you guys seen the amazon uh like what is it called like the bodysuit there's like a trend going on around on the internet of this thing like an amazon body suit. i don't think That's i've seen literally it. what it looks like <laughs> it's really silly yeah but, um, it's, it's m- m- more moments of just no more <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah, so a bunch of them pop out. Reeve with the gun pops out. He says that uh, the enemy is retreating. They've finally begun their withdrawal from Calm. And Vince just says, good. However, we still require your assistance. Reports are Edge is under attack. Edge from FF4 from last season. <laughs> oh, no. Dude, I, I didn't even think of that. My brain immediately went to 90s era WWF. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> Edge, is Edge. Christian okay? <laughs> <laughs> the the Edge from U2 is under attack. I, I also thought that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but that's, um, that's the end of the episode, isn't it? Pretty yeah, much, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. That's the end of the chapter. Um, we get a cut scene, but I think we can save that for next it time. It might be better, I think, to save it till next time, just because it'll be more thematic with the next one, maybe. Yeah, I mean, maybe. I think the only other thing um, outside the cut scene is we get our results screen. Our results screen. Did you oh, guys yeah. save you guys? yours? Are I did. Are have a, a, a pissing contest this season to see who is the I, best video game? I only wrote down <laughs> the final rank, but I can pull it up real quick, though. <laughs> sure. I took a screenshot of yours, and I forgot what I did. Oh. <laughs> so I have I have mine here. I destroyed 119 targets, which got me an S rank. Nice. And my accuracy rate may sound a little low, fully intentional. I got exactly what I wanted. That was 69%. I thought I was like, I was like, oh. can you say 69? <laughs> I'm going to freak that out. Was, you counted. You had to make sure like i got keep yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. doing doing the math in my head the whole time yeah i'm like oh no i'm i'm slightly too high now hopefully there's more enemies for me to miss shots at um playing four Wait, dimensional how many, chess how many season. targets did you get you like 119 or something 119 yeah nice you got 16 um, more than i did nice what was your rank in that a Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. My my targets was S still. Okay, yeah. So I think this is because Carl spent more time in the square helping the WRO, which is actually kind oh, of maybe. optional. You can just kind of you can just skip it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you can just like ah, I'll, won't help. It's them. funny too because like in you know play uh, PlayStation Two graphics, like when I was fighting the uh, the deep ground guys i almost called them the deep net um when i was <laughs> fighting them i was like yeah. running around and then i see a bunch of dudes running towards me and i'm like ah blah, 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 and i was like oh wait those are my friends <laughs> but um yeah and then damage sustained i got like three thousand five hundred something and that gave yeah. me a d rank so if you read down my ranking it's s a d sad <laughs> yeah i got a uh, 1300 damage sustained Damn, um, I took a lot more fucking damage than you. How many critical hits did you get? This is the only one I have an issue with. I got 36. Okay, is that a C? Yeah, that's a C. Okay, how am I supposed to up my critical hits? That's not fair. Yeah, how the I don't fuck is that your... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, fuck you, game. I'm guessing this is supposed to motivate you to replay it with like better weapons and yeah. better critical like, RNG, right? All right, yeah. what about your kill chain? A 93. Ooh, I only had an 86. Still an S. Nice, yeah. So I got an S, yeah. Uh, items used, I got 17, which was a D. I guess I was just throwing po- potions left and right, okay. which makes sense because I took a fuck ton of damage. Um, Magic casted. Uh, That's a 21. Mako collected. What'd you get on that one? I got 66%. I got 88. So that might nice. be the Mako points like we were talking about. Yeah, I about. think that does make sense. Yeah. Times KO'd, zero. Same. And then my time expired was 41 minutes and 42 seconds. Ooh, 42 minutes and one second. Very nice. close. Very, pretty close. What'd you get for well, your ranking? A? Well played. Yeah, I think my ranking was. Yeah, me see. too. Yep. 
ranking A. Very but good. Pretty good. Now your Room experience. Room for improvement, but... Yeah, so at the end of the each level, you are given the option to either apply all the experience that you got to Vincent to level him up, or you can turn it into Gil at an exchange rate of one experience equals ten Gil. So did you go for the levels? I went for the levels. So did I, because I'm, I'm only level I'm one, a... so I'm like... Argh. I think, wait, when you were doing it on your stream, I think you were like, well, fuck capitalism. I don't want gold. I'm, yeah. just, I'm not doing this for that reason. Yeah, I'm not doing uh, this for money. Yeah, I'm not here to make friends. I'm here <laughs> to make experience. Uh, speaking of which, uh, it gives you your stats for how many civilians you saved, which I did 19 out of 25, so ripped to those six. Uh, <laughs> girl saved, one of one. Hell yeah, I don't miss. Uh, card keys located, four of four. And assist the WRO, members assisted, was seven out of 12. So five, yeah, I only got eight out of 12 on that one. Five poor sons of bitches died yeah. <laughs> on my watch. I mean the the uh, the deep ground guys who ambush the WRO O soldiers. They're so far away from you when you start. I was like, how the fuck do you save them? <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. But I don't know. I, I think it is pretty cool. Um, now that it, like it it does kind of incentivize going back and playing through and yeah, trying to get better stats, which is pretty and it's pretty fun. It is. I agree. So that uh, when I was playing it, I was like, "Fuck me and Curtis are definitely going to start fucking speed running this game." <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I can see. I can see myself doing it. So that is a uh, chapter one of Dirge of Cerberus, y'all. Yeah, we'll pick it up next week with the uh, the cutscene at the end of chapter one, and then we'll go through all of uh, chapter two. I guess this maybe uh, we'll see some more familiar faces. Who knows? It's I showdown guess... in the wastes. <laughs> so can we say, like, with some accuracy, probably that like this season will be twelve episodes long because there are twelve chapters of game. <laughs> like I, that makes sense. I think to me. so. I think that's a pretty good number. M maybe a thirteenth one for like the extra missions at the end yeah we i might. know like the final few chapters i think are split in half like there's oh, a few, okay. like maybe so there may be one or two of extra okay but right. yeah we'll see we'll just kind of go until Pencil it, it makes sense because it's easy to uh, it's an easy place to stop okay yeah well do y'all have anything else you want to say about it uh no i mean i guess if you want to watch me play it in real time um i'm gonna be doing that on my twitch channel uh twitch.tv slash carl germ um and i'll probably also just upload this all to my youtube which i don't have a custom url because i'm bad at youtube and i don't care about it and <laughs> that actually would be cool like, i think you need a a couple like like a hundred or a thousand subscribers or something to okay. unlock that who who knows who cares so l look forward to uh people being pissed at me for what whatever the fuck they want to be pissed about oh, in, the, yeah. YouTube in the youtube comments under my videos when i finally upload these fantastic anything y'all want to announce about real life yeah what's happening i have yeah. two things um, i have two things happening take it away my friend i will then uh one thing is we'll see how long this lasts but i invite you all if you'd like to to uh check out weekly beats because i've been doing a song a week for this uh website you can go to weeklybeats.com, and it's basically just like people are trying to write 52 songs in one year. Uh, you can join it, join up with me, and write it together. It only has to be one minute long, so I just like fart out something every week, so whatever. But if you'd like to join that, or if you'd like to listen to mine at weeklybeats.com slash Curtis, I invite you to do so. Um, and what was the other thing? Oh, Boy, howdy, have I gotten into Splatoon 2, y'all. It's so much freaking fun. I'm going to put my friend code on <laughs> fucking on Twitter. Everybody, come play Splatoon with me. I love it, and I'm playing it all the time. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, there you yeah, go. Those um, are my announcements. Yeah, for me, I, I guess I uh, kind of mentioned it in passing earlier, but uh, I'm engaged. I uh, nice. proposed to... Shit. To Sarah, my for, formerly my girl, the 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 fiance formerly your known -girlfriend. as girlfriend. Yeah, my uh, ex girlfriend. Your ex -girlfriend. Um, yeah. So on my birthday this year, which was a couple weeks ago, I proposed to her, and uh, shockingly, she said yes. So we're gonna get married. Did you did you do it Ugh. at exactly like eleven fifty nine fifty nine? So that <laughs> you proposed on your birthday, and then she said yes on into, her birthday. Into her <laughs> is there <laughs> one day between your birthday? There is not. So you actually proposed in between. No, okay, no. no so it was after. actually um uh. Yeah, her her birthday is right after mine. So we went away for um I just dogs both of you, so there you go. Oh, that's <laughs> fine. That's, um we, we went away to a uh, like a little inn in Pennsylvania, um not too far from where we live. And uh yeah, I I had wanted to for a while. I've had the ring since like last October or November, I think. I think I ordered it in like September. Um so yeah, uh, that's the uh that's the big news on my front. So 
Very, very happy. Well, congratu- congratulations, sir. If I had to give you a dirge of Cerberus rating, I would say <laughs> one out of one complete S rank. <laughs> 69%. 69%. Yeah, but I think that's about it. Cool, cool. Good job. How about you, Alex? Anything anything cool going on? Not really. Um, How's Goose? Goose is great. Um, yeah, record is done with the band. We're Ooh. just currently shopping around, so if you are a label please sign us. <laughs> We've received a lot of rejections. We need, we need, a, we need a W, please. <laughs> well, you know what? Like, the way I understand, like, labels being, like, any label that, like, doesn't want to work with you should probably be considered a W because that probably means you don't want to work with them either. Yeah. That's prime. Yeah. Now, we, have, we received a lot of very kind rejection emails, oh, yeah. I should say. It's all good. But, uh... Fuck them. No, yeah, I think that's about it. Cool. Um, I, li- I like to think um, as I was getting ready for this season because um, I set a precedent starting with I think Final Fantasy X to use voice clips. Um, I like to thank Jeff Roberts for helping me yes. track down some resources. The legendary JMR, who is now a podcast host for Retro Game Audio. So yes. go listen to the podcast Retro Game Audio. <laughs> Once a guest on Retro Game Audio, now a full fledged host. Yep. <laughs> Hell yeah. Fuck yeah. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, pointing me in the right direction, to which for a game that has never been ported, it's kind of a weird... Uh, there's ways to rip audio from PlayStation games, but again, this is not a very popular game, so it's like the resources out there are a little iffy. Um, thank you to Swedish... Uh, Swedish Fish. Service. Delicious candy <laughs> that keeps us going. Yes, a Swedish Dirge of Service enthusiast, uh, Shademp who is a very good, um, he's a speedrunner and a also helping like research and like kind of data mine this game a lot. And he found some really cool stuff. I brought the things I have found because of Jeff to him. And he's like, oh, there's some really weird audio in here, including like some like just throwaway dialogue, like the, the, the supposedly the sound designer just saying in Japanese, which I got to translate because like, with Corey, he was saying, <laughs> I think one of my spines is misaligned. <laughs> Just like mumbling into a microphone with lots of reverb. I'm like, dude, I feel you. That, that's incredible. <laughs> that is incredible work that you're all doing. It's really fun. It's like this, we're cracking open this egg. It's really neat. Um, so thanks to all those people. If you're interested in more stuff like that, I highly recommend the episode of Retro Game Audio that uh, JMR was on offhand. I don't remember which episode it was. <laughs> I want to say it was something to do with expansion audio. Um, JMR is like literally a wizard when it comes to oh, yeah, that absolutely. sort of stuff. With uh, Also check out his band Martial Art. Martial yes. Art. Hell fucking yes. I once made myself extremely, extremely uncomfortable in my car to deliver uh, some guitars to MAGFest <laughs> while I had uh, in my tiny ass car uh, five people, uh, including myself, as well as all of our gear for uh, MAGFest and some guitars to, to bring to them because uh, Mikhail, their, um, their other gu- their, their guitarist in the band, uh, flew in from Russia and wasn't able to bring his guitar with him. So a uh, friend of the show, Robbie, um, offered to to lend his guitar and Robbie wasn't going to be there in time to deliver it. So I was like, I'll do it. I'll probably fit it. (laughs) But yeah, martial art rules, JMR rules. Check it out. I'm sure there'll be links in the, uh, in the, uh, podcast notes. (laughs) Well, Alex, (laughs) Oh, it's been a while. It's been a while. Do you want to riddle my body with uh, bullets and then when you go to pick me up, uh, it bursts apart and a cute little cat jumps out? (laughs) It's a cute little Scottish cat. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I haven't done the style about the credits. Um, I guess thank you to me for doing the remix of this theme uh, (laughs) uh, for the season. Hell yeah. Thank thank you to Alex for making this show possible. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Thank you to Masashi Hamauzu for writing the music, which I am remixing. Um, It's pretty cool. Uh, leave us a review on iTunes. Um, you could apparently leave uh, reviews on Spotify now. So people oh, have been doing that. It's been very nice. I'm going to go now, read this. Leave us a nice word there. Um, if you have any weird memories of 2006 <laughs> that may or may not really relate to Dirge of Cerberus, leave us a message or text us at 530 Materia. When, when you were playing this game in 2006, would you ever imagine that 16 years later, you would see one of your favorite characters of all time, Tifa Lockhart, live? And more shown than ever at the Italian Senate. <laughs> if so, leave a five-star review. With, uh, <laughs> <last night. laughs> 
leave us uh yeah leave us some links to some more of that material so i know to block it <laughs> <laughs> um yeah you can find us at every fnff on twitter instagram and you can join our discord through any of those links and uh Reeve, it is nice to see you again. Not a very interesting podcast, though. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> bye bye. See ya.